Listen up, it's tailgating time again in Tennessee. But most importantly, team, you're going to need to refine that tailgate and the truck it's attached to. With a refinanced auto loan with Alcoa Tan Federal Credit Union with their got that promotion. They'll give you up to $500 for your debt. I see, coach. That's right, Johnny Alcoa Tan will pay you up to $500 for your debt. Now, let's get out there and spread the word. Say it with me. Alcoa Tan, Alcoa Tan, Alcoa Tan. ATFCU is an equal housing lender. When I made the move to my own studio, I was worried about this. I was worried about that. I was worried about, hey, did I get this piece of equipment? Did I get that piece of equipment? Does that sound good? Does that not sound good? One thing I didn't have to worry about, that was office furniture. Because office furniture outfitters met my furniture needs. With a 50,000 square foot facility, they have East Tennessee's largest selection and are the best value for new and used office furniture. Located in Knoxville, it's easy to find everything you need for your new space, including desks, file cabinets, chairs, conference tables, and more. Office Furniture Outfitters is turnkey. They came to my place, we mapped everything out that was needed, they delivered, and, get this, set everything up. To learn more about what Office Furniture Outfitters can do for you, log on to OFONOX.com. That's OFONOX.com. Deep down the middle, has got his man, and he's gone! Jason Swain, touchdown! It's time for the Swain event. Guess what time it is, my, my, my time. You can check your iPhone, better say it's side time. With your host, Jason Sway. My man. Real sports talk for the real sports fan. All you chumps are going to bow when I whoop them. It's time for the Swain event, fueled by Dead End Barbecue. Give me two of them and a red flag. Best day of the week, Swain event, fueled by Dead End Barbecue, top 100 barbecue restaurant in America, Monday. Best day of the week, 865-200-5503 is the B-Dry waterproofing hotline, bdry.com. And now, finally, Chad Johnson, Ocho Cinco, wants to... Get involved with his 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 cousin, Brandon Johnson, and uh, he tweeted out, "Can I please come to Tennessee as an assistant wide receiver coach, specifically for route running and creating separation?" Oh, so now Chad Johnson wants to be he wants to be a part of the family. You know what, Chad Johnson? Hey man, you want me to pick you up? <laughs> you, do come you, on down. Do, do you need a ride? What? When are you coming? Absolutely. Absolutely. Cousin is Brandon Johnson from Florida. And Brandon Johnson is one of the best route runners on our team, if not the best. Mm -hmm. So he is cut from the same cloth as Chad Johnson. So come on down, Chad Johnson. Come on down, man. We'll take it. 865-255-03. A lot to um, a lot to get to today. A lot to get to today. Um Commitments, Mike Williams, A.J. Johnson, found not guilty, and did not take a long time for the jury to come to that conclusion. Four years, almost four years, it's taken to find out if A.J. Johnson and Mike Williams were guilty or not guilty. Four years. For the for the start to the beginning, I mean, to the start to the end, and it took the jury a little over an hour and a half. And saw a lot of folks very upset. So, well, hey, as, as, as well as you should be. Because um, three young people's uh, lives altered and changed, changed forever. It's going to be very hard for A.J. Johnson to bounce back and, and take advantage of the opportunity that he that he had right there in his hands in November 2014, winding up his, his last season and preparing for the NFL Combine. And A.J. Johnson had did enough in his college career that he would have been drafted. He would have been – 
uh, on an NFL roster. I don't know what he would be right now in the NFL, but that's an opportunity A.J. Johnson lost, and I don't know if he's going to ever get it back. I don't know how you stay in shape for four years and still be able to uh, play at a high level at the highest level. Just a very, 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 very sad um, day it was, but also a happy day because two young people uh, avoid going to prison, um, and that's a place I don't want anyone to go. I don't want anyone to go to prison. You, that's not that's folks ain't made for that. Normal, you know, eighteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty three. You're not you're not made for that. Not made for that. It's pretty surreal to see that finally come to an end, and I <clears throat> still don't totally know how I how I feel about the whole thing because and, and we were talking about this distinction right before the show started and, and I think it it needs to be made you know you, you can't just say straight up oh AJ Johnson Michael Williams are quote unquote innocent I mean no one except those two guys that girl and you know, God know what exactly went down, um, but in the eyes of the law, they are innocent. Mm-hmm. And so you ha- you have to make that that distinction in the eyes of the legal system. They are completely exonerated. They they will not be prosecuted for any kind of of crimes related to this. Um, and and so you know, I look at it, and yeah, I'm I'm just kind of somber for. For everybody, I I think, because it's just a a situation when you look at it, just man, it could have been avoided. Just this, this never had to happen. Uh, and and you know, both these guys' lives were completely derailed. I don't know, you know, obviously the the accuser has been completely private through all of this and chosen to be so. Um, and and so I don't know any you know anything really about her story at all. But uh, it, you know, it it just ultimately it's just sad. You know, everyone in this story's life was delayed by by four years and taken completely off track. And um, like I said, for something that if if everyone just kind of wised up and sh- shook the you know the college kid out of their mind, it didn't have to happen. You know. Yeah, we um, we understand that this hour one. And um, folks that are riding in the cars and they may have young years. And so uh, we'll definitely try to be uh, as careful as we can discussing uh, something that is so, I mean, it's so big for, um, and it involves Tennessee football, Tennessee athletics, because, you know, Tennessee got this, this really bad um, stain, you know, during that Title IX situation. And Tennessee was perceived as a university in the same breath as Baylor. That just was not the case. Uh, this was a case where um, a young female and one of our football players had been seeing each other for for a while, and it, inclu- it involved a, um, a another football player that um, saw this young lady as a girlfriend, um, and um, it was a coincidence, I guess. You can say or you cannot say that that he was involved and helped uh, contact authorities and and during the testimony you heard where he gave her instructions. Um, just a, it's just a it's a really 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 crazy crazy story. Um, a lot of players felt betray, uh, betrayed by Dre Bowles and they felt like. Because they, you know, Dre knew about um, the the behavior of the young of the young lady prior to to that night and other other weeks and months before that, and and um, they felt like that that Dre was was jealous and um, and you saw where some some of the guys retaliated and was not happy. And then from the outside looking in, it looked really bad that you had players mad at Dre for what it looked like was doing the right thing. But the defense attorney simply said, 
They had consensual relations, and she felt, she you know, she felt, she felt, she regretted it. She felt embarrassed, and then she got locked into a lie, and then it spun out of control. And um, regret isn't isn't rape, is what the defense attorney, um, Elders said. And this is a, it's just a really really bittersweet moment. Um, we feel for AJ because he had an opportunity to, to do something special, and he still has an opportunity, but it may not include playing football for the National Football League, but he gets his freedom. And it should have never been questioned when you look at all the evidence that's put out there, how did this ever get the trial? <laughs> for this long is what uh, you ask yourself. A lot of lessons, though, in this whole entire situation, a lot of, a lot of coaching points for – coaches around the country when you're talking to young men and how to behave yourself, what situations to try to avoid. Um, I mean, when you hear the details about what happened that night, it's not something that that um, a lot of us probably would want to engage in, the type of activ- activities we want to engage in. Um, usually when you have relations, it's, it's, you know, it's a little one-on-one deal. It's not um, – it's not it's not that that took place there. Uh, but college life I guess and maybe some maybe folks are into that, but um it really, really peeled back the layers of what goes on, not in just college, but what goes on sometimes outside of your own mind, outside of your own world. And um just just glad for AJ Johnson. A couple weeks ago I worked at Jabbar Davis camp. And AJ was a linebacker coach, and he was he was full of spirit and running around and coaching the kids at a high level. And um, and we knew the trial was 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 was, was nearing, and I uh, just wanted to offer him great thoughts and prayers. And man, um, it worked out. It, glad that he is not going to spend any time in prison for a crime that he did not commit, according to according to the jury and uh, all the things that I've heard about what happened that night for the last four years, it matched up to what we heard during the testimony. Because mm-hmm. I, I heard what happened. I mean. Uh, yeah, what, a, what allegedly yeah. went down, I think we had all heard a very similar yes. version. Yep, yep. And so um, it's going to be hard to move on because that's a very traumatic experience. But um, I think we all can learn a lesson from from that whole trial. Uh, in the last four last four years, it's taken to even get to this point. But well, and and it's good at least from from what I've seen, and you already mentioned it there. It seems like AJ. I'm not so familiar with Michael Williams, but uh, he has kept his life in a good place during this entire time, despite the situation. I I mean, I'll I'll put it this way: the only times that I've seen AJ, I I, I saw him once out to dinner with a with a group of other guys that he played with at Tennessee. But other than that, the only times I've ever seen him were at church. Yeah. So I, it seems like, in some sense, he's tried to keep himself grounded. It doesn't appear that he's, you know, bitter or, or you know, you never know what's really going on in, inside somebody. But uh, it, at least it appears that he's kept himself in a good place. Maybe he has stay stayed uh, trained in shape, and maybe he can get back to football. I don't know. I mean, he he had an NFL career laid out in front of him, potentially coming out of college, and that's. Not gonna be nearly as easy now to get to, but yeah, I'm I'm not com- comfortable with the uh, the vitriol towards the the the, the accused. You you can't you can't say accuser. you can't say of her though. She did come out ultimately better than these two guys because she won a settlement in the Title Nine lawsuit. And she needs to give back. And and I mean there there's that much of an element to it. And I and I think. I mean, ultimately, you look at parts of that Title IX lawsuit, and some some of them haven't been litigated fully, and you know you can't speak to the to those. But the biggest parts that got thrown out in public were the Von Pearson case, thrown out, and with uh, insufficient evidence. This case, both guys completely acquitted. Uh, you know, and and Tennessee got dragged through the mud for months and months on end because of that. And uh, obviously, I mean, Tennessee's not gonna take any kind of counter legal action but it just yeah, it's not like like that that is just a such a regrettable piece of the most recent history of Tennessee athletics it, 
Swain event fueled by Dead End Barbecue, top 100 barbecue restaurant in America. We'll take our first break of the week here. 8.50 a.m., 100.9 FM, Rocky Top Sports, Swain Event uh, app, free for Android, Apple devices, and you can stream us live at SwainEvent.com. Stay with us. Hour one of the Swain Event is driven by Toyota Knoxville. Stop by Toyota Knoxville to see their great selection of new and pre-owned vehicles. They are conveniently located off the Lover Road exit at 10415 Parkside Drive, right here in Knoxville. It's Christmas in July at Better Mattress. Better Mattress has teamed up with Home Depot, and with select purchases, you can get a free Weber grill or choose a free adjustable base or a free headboard footboard while supplies last. Better Mattress has brands you know like Tempur-Pedic and Sealy, plus the brand I love, the Better Mattress brand, handcrafted in East Tennessee. Go to Better Mattress and get a free adjustable base free headboard footboard or free Weber grill while supplies last. Six area locations, BEDRmattress.com. At some point in your life, you're going to need an attorney. You need a guy like Jerrica Steele with the law firm of Butler, Vines, and Babb. Jerrica Steele is East Tennessee born and he understands what giving his all truly means. To Jared, every case is big and every client is important. He will aggressively push your case to make sure you are quickly paid every dollar that you deserve. Give Jerry Castillo a call, 865-244-3933, and talk with him directly. His office is located at 2701 Kingston Pike. So if you've been injured in a car wreck, let Jerry Castillo and Butler Vines and Bab fight for you. Top 100 Barbecue Restaurant Dead End Barbecue has a new slew of daily specials. Enjoy a different special meal every day, like the Chipotle chicken salad, the chicken tender sandwich, or the kitchen sink burrito filled with brisket, full pork and chicken, not to mention queso, jalapenos, and more. It's called the Kitchen Sink for a reason. Dead End isn't stopping at your plate, though. Be sure to check out their new summer drink offerings, including the Big Orange Crush, My Clementine, or the Tequila Squirt. There is always something new at Dead End Barbecue. Located off of Sutherland Avenue, Dead End Barbecue. The summer flavor search is over. You're driving home, flashing blue lights in your rearview mirror. You pull over, step out of your car, and the next thing you know, you're being arrested for driving under the influence. Now what do you do? We all should be responsible. But remember, just because you're arrested doesn't mean you're guilty. Call criminal defense and DUI attorney Marcos Garza at 865-540-8300. The investigative teams at the Garza Law Firm know the justice system inside and out. They utilize cutting-edge technologies and investigative methods to prepare your specific case. Before you plead guilty to any criminal charges, call criminal defense and DUI attorney Marcos Garza. Put his number in your phone right now, 865-540-8300, because you never know when you or a friend will need it. Don't say guilty. Say Garza. 865-540-8300. 865-540-8300 and GarzaLaw.com. You're listening to the Swain Event. And you know this, man. Eight six five two hundred fifty five zero three B Dry Waterproofing Hotline. Uh, let's get to the hotline there on line one, and uh, let's bring in Andy. Andy, good morning. Good morning. How are y'all doing this? Man, doing wonderful. Andy, how are you, man? Well, I'm doing wonderful after this weekend. After Ty Fields uh, committed, I watched his uh, highlight video the night before, and I was like, man, this dude is nasty. And uh, he, he committed, so that's that's wonderful. Wasn't as many committed as I thought was going to this weekend, but you know, we still got time. How uh, many were you expecting? How many were yeah, you I mean, expecting two, to commit? Two's pretty good. I was thinking three. Okay. I was thinking Macaulay would, but you know, he's still wanting to wait till about October, so. We still got time to build a relationship with him. So I've got a good feeling about it. I, I'll tell you this: um, Tennessee is at seventeen commit, commitments, and so if you are Darnell Wright, Corvair's Couch, you know there's always going to be a r- spot for you. There's always going to be room for you. But 
we are approaching only eight more spots. And so you better get in where you fit in. And I don't know right. if Jalen McCall uh, falls into that, that crouch Darnell Wright category for Tennessee. I don't know how Tennessee views him. Again, how the coaching staff views a prospect is the only thing that matters. It's not about a recruiting site, how they view a prospect with this staff, okay? This staff, they have their own criteria. They're not going to let some recruiting analysts tell them who can play for their football team. A recruiting analyst, we don't even know We don't even know the system. We, don't, we haven't even seen these guys practice yet. So how can a recruiting analyst tell us what players are going to fit and what Peru wants to do on defense or Helton wants to do on offense? So I don't know how the staff views McCullough. If they see him as, you know, top of the board, must get, we're going to save a spot for you, take your time, then okay. But if not, then there's going to be other players committing and he may not have a spot. I don't know. Um, J- Jalen McCullough, just to fully explain, uh, number nine safety in the class of 2019, four, high four star, just for yeah. And he's he's a there. he's a um, he's a top 200 player, yep. top 250 player. He's a, he's a good player, um, but there's going to be there's going to be another commitment here here soon. Um, you know, Austin Price, we had him on. It was right before. The Roman Harrison commitment, I, I, and I asked him over under, if we put it at two, how many commitments will we have in the next few days or so? And he said over. So we had three. And it could have been four. It could have been five. It could have been. Uh, there are players right now that Tennessee, they're in a really good spot for. Really, 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 really good spot for. And that's why – when a player commits and you get some folks who are questioning the commitment and questioning the, the, the talent level of the player, I'm just saying just wait. Just chill out. Just wait. It's, it's July. We're good. Tennessee has 17 total commitments, eight left. Committed means committed. does not mean signed. So, and this is the ugly part about recruiting. It's part of that I don't necessarily like, but I get it. It's part of it. It works on both sides. There, There's players that – commit somewhere, and they continue to look, and they'll flip in a heartbeat. There's coaches that and teams that accept a commitment, and if they find another kid that's better, then they'll, they'll process them. So that's I don't like either side of that, but it happens, and it's a part of it, and it needs to happen if you're going to win at a high level. It's hard to tell a kid no who is one of the best kids in the country. When you already have one of those one of those players at their position, but at the end of the day, you are judged on wins and losses, and how you win and how you lose is the quality of players that you get and your ability to coach them up and develop them. So I I get it. I don't necessarily like it, but a lot can happen between now and the early signing period, and then now and um, the the normal national signing day. A lot can happen. But Tennessee's in a really, really, really good spot now. 17 uh, really good players, and they are in it for, uh, you know, some some really, 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 really good players too. About, eh, I want to say about 8 to 10 really good players uh, that Tennessee's in for. And the numbers will get numbers will get funky here in a little bit. If, if they get everyone that they're shooting for and they end with, you know, the, the 25 that you would say, that's the ideal class. Where does this class land when you look at it? Without getting into, you know, specifics. Top 15. Yeah, that'd be a top 15. Easy. Top 15, not top 10. Because top, top 10 is really where I was, you know, kind of asking, you know, I, I, will I, it end up that high? They can be in top 10. You get Darnell Wright, you get Crouch. I mean, you can find yourself in the top 10. If you had three five-stars in this class, yeah, I mean, yeah, that, I mean you'd be hard-pressed to be outside of top 10, I feel like. but Yeah, you can, you can, you can find yourself there. And thanks for the phone call, Andy. Yeah, I mean, any, anywhere from 1 to 12 is, I mean, it's, it's good. It's good. I mean, we're talking about the difference between, you know, one player if you go from maybe 12 to 9 or something like that or 12 to 10. Um, but what if that one player is a knucklehead? What if that one player is hurt? What if that one player does not develop? What if that one player is lazy? You just, you just never know. And so that's why so much – Weight is going to be put on who develops these young men, who develops yeah. them mentally, emotionally, spiritually, uh, who gives them all the resources to be successful, uh, who inspires these young men 
Uh, how do you get the best out of them? Because the coach, the coaching staff that gets the best out of their players usually wins. And it's been Alabama, and it's been Clemson. And Clemson has not even touched the top ten uh, for a while. And Clemson, they do a great job of taking talent that they want. And I remember one year they didn't even sign 20 kids. I think they signed like under 20 kids one year. But they were very highly rated. And it's who they want it, it's who they need it, and they're going to develop them and get the best out of them. That's, that's what you want to do. You just hear, you hear a couple of things with teams that are national championship caliber. It's that it, uh, is it, uh, they've all had a top ten class within the previous three years, previous five years, something. I believe it was the top five class. Top five class in the previous five years, some, something like that. And then you also hear that – well, and this is not – you just don't hear it. This is a fact. Every coach that's won a national championship in the BCS era has won at least nine games in their second year. So I look at I look at those two things initially with Pruitt. If you can get – obviously, a top five recruiting class is a huge ask. But, you know, basically, it's – they're great recruiters, and they know how to build up a program really quickly. Like, th- essentially, when, when I look at it, you know, those are two giant signs that you got a winner. Uh, and so those those are the things that I'll I'll really be looking at. Obviously, this is not a top now, five, top five class. I'm not going to be extremely perturbed. But I I am one that gives coaches a longer leash than most people. I I'm one that doesn't really after year two think that he needs to be fired right away just because he didn't make it to Atlanta. Uh, obviously, my case in point would be Holly Warlick. I don't think she's the greatest coach in the world, but I'm also not. Uh, thinking that she should be fired after every single basketball game like everybody else on the planet does. Um, but to your point, Dabo Sweeney, he won nine games his second year, but then turned around in year three and went six and seven. Things have turned out okay for him. So my point in bringing that up is that Jeremy Pruitt may not win nine games or make it to Atlanta in year two or year three, but that doesn't mean that he's not going to be successful at Tennessee. Yeah, I, and I know some people are thinking this because I thought this. There's – those two examples, I 100% get. Um, sometimes you, it's, a, it's a process, and you just don't know how great a coach is until the third year, the fourth year, whatever. Um, but the SEC East is is going to be back. And what I mean by back is the East used to be the powerhouse division of the SEC. Um Will Muschamp is running a really good program, and they're building things the right way. You look at Georgia, and they are uh, getting five-star commits, you know, every other day, and that's and that's fine. Um, but at the end of the day, that doesn't guarantee you a win. That just guarantees you uh, some really good players, the best of the best of from their area, and the analyst thinks really, really highly of them. But can you coach them? Can you coach them? Can you develop them? Can you get the best out of them emotionally? Um Spiritually, can you get the best out of them? And that's always uh, the challenge. And so, then you have, you know, then you have Florida. <sighs> yeah, you know what, man? <laughs> Florida's just Florida at what? this point. What is, what is Dan Mullen doing? I don't, th- I don't think Dan Mullen knows what Dan Mullen is doing. <sighs> what, what is Dan Mullen doing out here? Taking uh, vanity pictures with the recruits, it looks like. Say, like th- these pictures are looking like the they're they're the football equivalent of. Do you remember Olin Mills? You ever take like Olin Mills pictures when you were a little kid? You went to you, you, you know you went to the mall. Yeah. You went to the Olin Mills and you got the the picture of you and your sisters sitting back to back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, this this is the football equivalent of that. I feel like where you just look at it and you're like, ooh. Oh, gosh, that's that's cringy. That's Dan. Uh, you, what is Dan Mullen doing out here? Now, you I'll be honest. If he had a grill in, I would not have had a problem with it. I think that would have been pretty huh. cool. Like, you remember Tom Herman got his grill at uh, Houston after they won 10 games, I believe? I mean, I get that. Houston. Like, if he had taken the picture with a grill in, I would have been okay with it. I mean, it would have been funny because, you know, Houston is like the home of grills. You know, you got Paul Wall down there. He makes grills. That would have been cool. There's the crow again. That would have been cool <laughs> to, to do that. But 
<sighs> let me take a break. So before I say something I shouldn't say, let me just do that. Let me gather my thoughts. What what is Dan Mullen doing out here in these streets? 865-200-5503. Stay with us. Be right back. Hour one of the Swain event is driven by Toyota Knoxville. Stop by Toyota Knoxville to see their great selection of new and pre-owned vehicles. They are conveniently located off the Lovell Road exit at 10415 Parkside Drive, right here in Knoxville. We have all made the mistake of dropping or breaking our smartphones. See? But did you know that you can have it repaired for a fraction of the cost that it takes to replace it? Well, you can, because iDrop is the area's leading mobile repair store, home of the one hour or less phone repair, one year parts warranty, and number one customer service. Broken screens, cracked cameras, charging ports, batteries, you break it, we'll fix it. If you didn't break your phone, protect it with one of our leading accessories such as LifeProof, OtterBox, UAG, Isipico, Caseology, and Spec. Visit our West Hills location at 7115 Kingston Pike between Office Depot and Hardy's or call 865-888-9740 and speak with our trained technicians to see how we can get your phone working today. Nobody likes surprises, so switch to Erie Rate Lock. Get a great rate that stays that way even after an accident, ticket, or inflation. In fact, it's locked until you change a car, driver, or your address. Your Erie agent in Knoxville is in SureFit RM. Get a quote at 865-684-4900. That's 865-684-4900. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage. It's not available in all states. JC's Tree and Landscaping Service specializes in quality tree work done at an affordable price. Trimming and removing trees are their specialty. They also offer other services like land clearing, stump grinding, crane services, and all of your basic landscaping needs for both commercial and residential. JC's will give you a free estimate and beat any written quote by a competitor to guarantee that you get the lowest price around. Don't risk your land with a fly-by-night service. JC's Tree and Landscaping is licensed and insured. Give them a call at 865-599-3799. Gentlemen, when it comes to health and quality of life, there are numbers every man needs to know, including our testosterone number. I recommend going to Low T Center. They make it quick and easy to get your levels checked, and it's covered by most health insurance. Low T levels can make you feel tired and grumpy. It can raise your cholesterol, cause weight gain, and loss of muscle mass. Low T Center's physicians specialize in treating low T in men. Listen to me here. They know men's health and are reinventing men's health care. Call 865-392-1388 or go to LowTCenter.com. Craving homemade flavors that don't take hours in the kitchen? Mrs. Grissom's cheese spreads and chicken salads are the perfect go-to. Ready-to-eat meals and snacks found in the meat or dairy section at the grocery store with flavors of home in every bite. Whether you crave the classic Mrs. Grissom's pimento cheese or the gold gluten-free select cranberry pecan chicken salad, enjoy the sweet taste of a home-cooked meal in every container. Select the best. Select Mrs. Grissom's. Small town, small town. I'm Vince Moore, wide receiver, VFL 1991, and you're listening to The Swain Event. Dude, that crow's killing me. If the beat wasn't so good, I would quit playing the instrument. Golly, that crow, man. The crow is worth putting up for for the beat. Oh, man. All right, so Warren Burrell, corner, um, commits to Tennessee. Yeah, four-star corner, Ty Fields, four-star corner commits. So you got two corners uh, committed. You still have a chance to get a third, I don't know, maybe even a fourth uh, in this class. I'm pretty sure the Tennessee staff are letting these guys know that we're going to take – one, two, three corners, and you guys can be um, the, the, the the group that gets the secondary back to, to, to lockdown status. You're going to play a ton of guys uh, during the game anyways. When you go up against four wide sets, three wide sets, you're going to have a nickel. You're going to have a dime playing. So uh, you don't need to worry about 
not playing if you're a corner because you're going to play. If you're good enough, you're going to play. It may be on the outside. It may be a nickel, uh, but you're going to play. No doubt about it. So um, not surprised that Tennessee is going to bring in more players at the corner position than just one, than just two. They could possibly sign three or uh, four this 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 year, and that's what, exactly what Tennessee needs. Uh, even with Delonte Taylor moving over to to corner, you still need more corners. You gotta have them. You gotta have them. Um, for for Warren Burrell, I think it's important to break out the J.C. Sherbert article <coughs> that we referenced twice last week. Uh, he's another three star. I saw some Tennessee fans commenting. On Tennessee getting another three-star, of course. Oh, my gosh. Um, ranked the number 481 overall player in the country, according to the 247 composite, number 44 overall corner. But what was the first question? Does he have an elite measurable? Well, he has a long wingspan. He's tall, he's long, and he's fast enough to likely get it done in the SEC. Now, some people are questioning his 40 because he ran a 472 in late March. Uh, I believe in one of the Nike opening like regionals, um, but in retrospect, like kind of putting him up against um, some other guys. I know Jaden Hill also ran uh, like a four five nine forty um, at that same combine, and then Christian Williams, an Alabama commitment, who is a corner, ran a four seven four at that same event. So that forty time is kind of a question mark for some people. But you have to consider the elements that he ran the 40-time in and the fact that it's cold um, in late March. So, yeah. I like him. I, I think he's quick twitch. Uh, it, it's clear that he loves football. He plays on Cam Newton's 7-on-7 seven seven team, and everybody raves about the competitor that he is, always asked to be on, um, go up against the other team's best receiver. So, I, I like the commitment. You know, Rivals has him as a as a as a uh, four star. Uh, the same person that evaluates and ranks kids in the state of Georgia is not the same person who evaluates and ranks kids in Tennessee, from what I was told. So that's 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 a good thing. Um, he's five eleven, like you mentioned. The thing about forty yard um, times in high school is, n- I'm willing to say ninety percent, ninety percent of high school. Athletes do not know how to run a proper 40. Mm-hmm. 90%. That is a very high number. Um, how do I know this? Because I used to time 40s around the country. Um, I personally time Demir Bird, who went to South Carolina, plays for the Carolina Panthers. He's the fastest 40 I've ever timed. He ran a 4 2, 4 2 8. Jeez. And when he ran it, the second time, we had four coaches stand at the finish line to confirm he ran this time, and everyone had four two. He 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 is special, but he ran track all through our uh, all through our high school. If you don't run track, if you don't know how to run, then you're not going to run a forty. Forty is all about technique, and so that's why it's important to bring kids to camp so you can see how they run when a receiver's running a go route. When you have a fast receiver running a go route, are you catching up with him? Are you running with him step for step? Because if you're doing that, I don't care how fast your 40 is. If you're running up against Judy from Alabama on a go route, that's all I care about. I don't care about your 40. Now, 40 is a is a, is a great indicator. It helps. But you have to understand something. These high school kids, they don't know how to run a 40-yard dash. Coming out of college, it's important for the NFL scouts that you run a 40-yard dash. At a you know at a nice nice time, you have six eight nine weeks to train to learn how to run, so it's very important that you run a, high, a fast forty there. But these kids do not know how to run a forty over ninety percent. I'm willing I'm willing to bet. We have an interesting point on on Periscope. Ben Hall said straight line times in sports really aren't that significant in the NFL. I mean at least the NFL Combine they they count for a lot. But he says <clears throat> can. Can you explain the difference between straight line speed and, and change of pace, change of direction speed? Yeah, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, you know, Jonathan Wade, is, that's, my, that's my guy, man. It's like one of my best friends. And Jonathan Wade is always a track guy, always, always a track guy. And he was super 
quick too. Don't get me wrong. Very, very quick. But when Jonathan Wade started to put it together as a corner, because he went from receiver to corner, but when he started putting putting it together, he stopped relying on his speed. See, when you're fast and you have track speed, sometimes you can rely on it way too much and you can get really lazy with your technique. And there's times I would beat him in practice because – he would, he would get lazy on his technique. Here I am. I'm a 4-5 or five guy at best uh, at Tennessee. And here's John DeWay. He's a 4-2 guy. I trained with this guy in Florida. I thought he was going to run a 4-2 at the combine, to be honest. Uh, but he ran a 4-3-3, three, three, so whatever. Um, but here he is going up against me. He knows he's faster than me. He knows if I beat him, he's going to be able to catch up. He knows that I'm not going to outrun him to score. But if he's lazy with his, with his technique – I can beat him on every route. I might not be able to outrun him to a touchdown, but I can get a big play on him. And there was times where I would do that in practice. There was times where he would beat me in practice. But you don't want to become so reliant on your on your speed that you lose your technique. And so that's what Ben Hall is talking about. Can you change directions? If you're going up against a receiver, you're playing off, off coverage, you're off about eight yards, the receiver, he's blazing off the line of scrimmage, and he runs a curl route. Are you going to be able to get out of your back pedal, change directions, and drive back down uh, on the football and make a play on the ball? Can you change directions? How good are your hips? How good are your feet? These are things that I'm sorry. Evaluators may not know 100% about. Where coaches bring you in, they can put you through drills to see if you may, if you if you possess those skills. So – 247 has him, has him at a three-star. Rival has him at a four-star. Keep in mind, it is freaking July. And once again, we had this conversation. It's freaking last, July, I man. think we had the conversation on Friday. Maybe it was Thursday. But I'm going to trust Jeremy Pruitt in his evaluation over the recruiting analyst. And that's nothing against the recruiting analyst. It's just when you look at Jeremy Pruitt's resume, there's no recruiting analyst in the country that can stack up their resume with Jeremy Pruitt's. And I would say that I would say that about Darrell Wright. If Darrell Wright committed today or Carvara's couch. I mean, those guys are rated high. They're rated as five stars. It works both ways for me right now. It wasn't like that a year or two ago. I'm just telling you. I'm being honest. It wasn't like that. The reason why it's like that now is because Butch Jones had proved that he was chasing stars. And I've already know about this staff that they're not looking at it at all. The same guy that the two four seven thinks is the number one running back in the country is not who Tennessee thinks is the number one running back in the country. Or the same guy who thinks that this linebacker is is third in the country, Tennessee does not have third on their board. They have a different board. So um, that I that I know, and that's why I'm able to make these comments um, here on the show. I'm not just saying it just because. No, I'm saying it because of, of fact that this is how the staff is operating right now. And I'm not saying that it's going to 100% work because nothing is guaranteed. But I'm telling you what is going on. And I personally feel more confident that a coach is making a kid come basically try out. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what it is. You may not want to say it, but that's exactly what it is. It is a tryout. So uh, you address some needs there, corner, and these guys are 5'11 and, and taller. So if they have long arms, they have a long wingspan, that 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 bodes well even more. And Alabama that, had, you know, um Levi, what's the kid's last name? Levi Wallace. Levi Wallace, who started off as a walk on, yep. but the kid had great, great height, but he had a crazy crazy wingspan. And he was a technician. He was a technician. He was an absolute technician at the cornerback position. Uh reminds me a lot of of, of a Darrell Reeves uh because Darrell Reeves is not the fastest. He was a 4-5 guy. He wasn't the most athletic guy on the field. He was a 4-5 guy. But, oh, technique-wise. Nobody te- better. Technician during his, during his prime. That's why they call it Reeves Island. He was a technician, and that's what it's all about. More than just speed. But if you have the measurables, uh, nice wingspan, if you can stand up straight and touch the bottom of your kneecaps, we can work with that. Yeah, and that's what Warren Burrell is, tall, long, long wingspan. The question with Warren Burrell is how much weight is he going to be able to gain? He's at 170. That's easy. And he – yeah, it is – it's just right now coming out of high school, that's kind of his biggest knock 
not as light as Emmanuel Mosley, but he's definitely more towards Emmanuel Mosley than he is college ready. Oh, he'll gain weight, right? He'll, 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 he'll gain, he'll gain yeah, 15 I'm, pounds just looking at the food yeah, around I'm, here. I'm not worried about it. But yeah. as and then Tyus Field, I mean, we don't need to know anything about his ability to play football because we know he's going to be a baller when he gets to Tennessee. He's got dreads, so um, he's 100 percent oh, yeah. locked to be All SEC for like three seasons. Oh yeah, we get up there. Yeah, he passes. He Which passes the test. I meant to bring this we up on dreads. Friday. Remember on Thursday we had my little bet. That the Grizz, I signed that the Grizzlies will make the playoffs if Gasol and Conley stay healthy. Mm-hmm. I feel 10 million times more confident about this. You know why? Why? Mike Conley now has dreads. Can he stay healthy? Oh, he's got dreads. He's going to stay healthy. He's going to win MVP. The Grizzlies know. are going to win an NBA title. I don't know if dreads applies to basketball, though. Dreads apply to all facets of life. I don't know, man. I don't know about basketball. If, I, if I don't you see, had dreads, there's not a lot of ballers out there with dreads. I mean, I'll put it this there's way: there's some, but not a lot. Not a lot. Got not like football. Rows. Not if, like football. If you had dreads, Swain, I mean, I think at this point we would basically be the Dan Patrick show. You know, we would be. No, we'd be better we'd, than Dan Patrick. Yeah. But I think I think I think dreads only apply to football, though, guys. Don't, I I guess I wouldn't want to play basketball with dreads anyways. The only guys I can think of are Demari Carroll, and he's he's all right. And then Kenneth Fareed. He was really good at college. Those are really the only two guys I, off the top of my head I, I can think of. I think it only applies to football, folks. I think well, so. Baseball, too. Andrew McCutcheon, he's, he had dreadlocks, won an MVP, got rid of his dreadlocks, and he hasn't been the same since. You know, we don't see a lot of dreads in baseball. In baseball. Cameron Maben, Just saying. he has dreadlocks. He's pretty good. Well, I mean, that's, that's the Mabins. That's what they do. Jalen. I mean, that's just that's just a, a Clarksville thing right there. All right, we got Attaboy coming up next. Hour one of the Swain event is driven by Toyota Knoxville. Stop by Toyota Knoxville to see their great selection of new and pre-owned vehicles. They are conveniently located off the Lover Road exit at 10415 Parkside Drive, right here in Knoxville. VFL's Jason Swain and Todd Kelly here with our Men on Football and Smoothie segment. Let's discuss some of our favorite smoothies and how they impact our lives. TK, man, tell me which smoothie comes to mind when you think about playing defense. Swaino, the Peanut Butter Power Plus and the Power Punch Plus provide the energy needed to make plays every time they take the field. Then you have the Gladiator and the Hulk. Nutrition every dominant player has to have. Bottom line, everyone wants to be a dominant player. Now, Swain, you tell me about the offensive side of the ball. TK, it's simple. You always score with Smoothie King. The shredder personifies what we are going to do to opposing defenses. The berry punch and activator will light up the scoreboard. And in case we need to go into overtime, the pure recharge will put us over the top for the win. Swain O, you know I love football and Smoothie King. I'm a VFL, a Smoothie King for life. The chocolate gladiator and the chocolate shredder with the scoop of peanut butter. Oh, that's my go-to smoothie. They get a chest bump all day. Yes, sir. This concludes our Men on Football and Smoothie King segment for today. Don't forget the Sip by Sip program. Use Smoothie King as a meal replacement five or more times a week, and you will feel and see the difference. Smoothie King, the healthy alternative to fast food. Delicious and nutritious. TK. Don't forget the peanut butter. Yeah, boy. With the hot weather and humidity comes mosquitoes and other pests. Let Southeast Termite and Pest Control take care of their problem for you. They offer one-time or package treatments that control biting adults as well as larvae. Southeast Termite and Pest Control has been in business since 1971 and is local and family-owned. They offer free estimates and quotes with no obligations so don't get bit anymore go with the pest control company you can trust call southeast termite and pest control at 865-925-3700 or find them online at southeasttermite.com hey annie you're the spokesperson for toyota knoxville right that's right why should i buy from toyota knoxville are you looking for new or used vehicles does it matter no because toyota knoxville has over 390 new toyotas on the ground and over 350 pre-owned vehicles available to choose from okay so big selection and a lifetime warranty at no charge on all new and select pre-owned vehicles a lifetime warranty a non-factory limited lifetime powertrain warranty with unlimited miles plus 30 years of experience in 
Knoxville, not just serving our customers, serving our community. And the buying experience? Hello, it's Toyota Knoxville. Read the reviews. Talk to anybody that's been there. Okay, okay. Where am I going? Toyota Knoxville is at I-40 and the Lover Road exit. Go to Parkside Drive. You can't miss it. Can I tell them Annie sent me? I wish you would. If you're passionate about the car you drive, come meet the people that are passionate about the way they sell at Toyota Knoxville. ToyotaKnoxville.com. Warranty good at participating dealers. I just wanted to come by and congratulate you on the great work you've been doing. I like your style. You remind me of a young me. Failure is not an option. That boy is good. Fools remind yourself. Nobody built like you. You design yourself. Atta boy. Bring on the positivity. Bring it on. Can you smell it? Smells, smells good. It smells good, Charlie. What you got over there, man? It's time to highlight some positivity uh, in the world of sports, also outside the world of sports. What do you got over there, Charlie? So this, this attaboy is a little bit off the wall. It could almost, just because of the, the sort of wackiness of this, it could almost be a for what, but it's definitely a feel-good story at the same time. So I got, I got an attaboy for Jordan Buckley. Now, who's Jordan Buckley? He's a musician in the band called Every Time I Die. They're a metal band. Um... And he relayed this story on social media this week, and, and I think it's very funny. Here's, here's what he said. He said, you guys want to hear a crazy story? A lady came up to me at a show and said, I saw you guys a little bit ago, and you spit beer in the air, and I was in the front row and got some in my eye. <laughs> I apologized. I said, our shows get pretty crazy. You never know what's going to happen. I'll probably, I was probably just trying to mimic someone way cooler than me. So she said that the next day her eye was still bothering her, and she thought her eye was infected, so she went to the doctor. Uh, and, and George Buckley says, I apologize ten more times and brace myself for her handing me a lawsuit. And uh, she said she went to the doctor. They did tests. The doctor said it wasn't an eye infection, but in fact it was a brain tumor, uh, and they caught it early enough that they were able to perform surgery, remove it fully, and she's now cancer free she said if she never got the beer spit in her eye she never would have caught the brain tumor and uh and then he says she thanked me for saving her life and then he he ends it by saying point being if you come to one of our shows it could save your life uh, i like it man good story you, you i mean you, you never you never know little things like that obviously don't go spitting beer in people's eyes uh but uh i i just saw this and it's so like i said it's the way that it happened, it could almost be a for what? I mean, you're spitting beer in somebody's face. But at the same time, uh, this girl had had her life saved by by these crazy uh, circumstances. Well, well, Charlie, you came in this morning saying that you had a sore throat, and you uh, basically warned Ben that if he got you sick, um, if he had, you know. Yeah, Ben, ben, had, ben had strep throat ben last week. Ben had strep throat. Ben had yeah. strep throat. That if he no, got hold, you, no, we can't and, end it at that note. And came and did the show. That's not true. That's fake news. Okay, no, that's fake news. He did the you, show for a, feeling bad for a, for about a week until he finally went to a doctor. Over about three weeks. Well, he did, uh, but it wasn't like it wasn't like your serious strep throat, hard to swallow. It was it was it was like a little I, weird. It was, it, it was a very mild, mild, mild yeah, case it was, of strep it, throat. It was weird. And so, it was gone within 24 hours. So what we need to do, Charlie, is what you're saying is Ben needs to get some beer and spit it in your face. So that way you can go to a doctor. I like the sound of that. <laughs> and maybe they can find out what's really wrong with your with your, with your with your throat, man. Why you got a sore throat? I'll put it this way. I've been to the doctor plenty uh, enough recently um, for stuff that I'm not going to talk about on air. And so uh, I think I think I'm good. Okay. I think I'll, all right. You know, I'll, I'll just stick it out. I, you know. Okay. Get some cough drops, man. You'll be all right. Get some tussing. You'll be I, good to go. I think I'll make it. I'm just I'm having to drink a little bit more water than usual this morning. I have a string of attaboys today, little quick hits. Uh, first one, you got to send positive vibes. Not really an attaboy, but got to send positive vibes to Ramon Foster, who on f- Saturday, I believe it was Saturday afternoon, uh, during practice, was rolled up on by Marquise Pouncey. Um, and initially, couldn't put weight on it. He was... I think he shed a couple of tears. I mean, Big Ben was concerned, the trainers, the coaches. It, it looked bad. It looked like he probably tore his ACL or was going to miss the season. But it turns out 
He just hyper extended his knee and is only going to miss four to six weeks. Oof. So it should be back week two, week three. So good. not only is that good for him, but also good for my Steelers because Ramon Foster has logged the most snaps of anybody on the Steelers since 2009. And not only just the Steelers, but in football, he's logged up, he's logged so many snaps up there and um, of course amongst it, the ranks. It had to be a former Gator that uh, I know. rolled Frick up on him, man. Um, so positive vibes to – Marquise Pound or to Ramon Foster. And then got to give a huge attaboy to LeBron James, who today is opening his I Promise school there in Akron. And last night, LeBron tweeted, the jitters before the first day of school are real right now. Tomorrow is going to be one of the greatest moments, if not the greatest of my life, when we open the I Promise school. This skinny kid from Akron who missed 83 days of school in the fourth grade had big dreams. So really cool to see LeBron James um, use his platform very few people in this planet have as big of a platform as LeBron James, which is why personally, I know many people don't feel this way, but personally, I don't care that LeBron James is an athlete. He is a very, very smart person, a very smart human being who cares about doing good in this world. And with the platform that he has to speak for so many people who don't have a voice, he should absolutely take advantage of his platform. Um, and I hope he continues to take advantage of his platform by doing things like this um, and not sticking to the to to just being an athlete like many people want him to be. So I, I, I love seeing these kind of things from LeBron James. Yeah, and this is this is my attaboy today too. Um, to to add on to that tweet, it says uh, this this skinny kid from Akron who missed 83 games of school in the fourth grade had big dreams. And if you know LeBron James' story, you know that he moved around a lot. Uh, with his mother l living at this place, at this place. And so he missed 83 days of school there in the fourth grade cause, because they probably were moving around, didn't have a place to, to, to live. Uh, he says, big dreams for the kids at Akron to give them everything that I could possibly, that they could possibly need to feel their passion, give back to our community and change the world. This school is that. The people are that. Akron is that. Uh, the LeBron James fa Family Foundation, we've always done it big. Uh, and it doesn't get bigger than opening uh, day tomorrow. So I, I'm unbelievably proud and excited to see my kids, my home, and the 330 tomorrow. Thank you. Let's get it. Let's go. Uh, at I Promise School, we are family. Hashtag I Promise. And so I know Jalen Rose has a school, um, Detroit. Uh, LeBron James has a school. Uh, Deion Sanders had a school there uh, in the Dallas area. And you can say whatever you want to say about LeBron James on, on the court, whatever, but I would never be a LeBron James hater. I hold LeBron James in a high regard than Michael Jordan, uh, not because of what he did on the basketball court and how many championships he won, but the impact that LeBron James has on people and the impact that he has on his community. He built, built homes. He has a school now. Uh, and for me, LeBron James will always be the high regard. I don't care how many points he scores because he changed people's lives uh, in a positive way. So uh, it takes a lot to do for others or think about others when you have everything that you could ever want. 865-200-5503, hour two coming up. Touchdown turnover around the corner. By now, you know that Muya has the best burgers in Knoxville. Their beef is never frozen. They have all natural turkey burgers and black bean veggie burgers. Not to mention they make their buns in-house every day. But now you can also get 100% all beef hot dogs or, wait for it, all natural chicken sandwiches. Trust me, these chicken sandwiches put chicken restaurants to shame. So stop in the Muya and taste the difference. Located at 7301 Kingston Pike, right by Better Mattress. Do you have cracks in your foundation? 
a wet basement, or a nasty, leaky crawl space? Our listeners have heard about them on the Swain event for over a year, and now it's time to make the call. Give Be Dry Waterproofing and Foundation Repair the opportunity to fix your home's problem. Since 1958, that's right, nearly 60 years, Be Dry has been solving basement, crawl space, and foundation problems throughout the country. Be Dry only uses high quality materials from reputable manufacturers. They back their installations with some of the best warranties in the industry to provide homeowners with added peace of mind. They are truly an A plus company. Whenever you start experiencing a wet basement, leaky crawl space, or a cracked foundation, remember these three words better call Be Dry. Reach out to Be Dry today at 865 662 5238 to schedule your free appointment. That's 865 662 5238. Remember, better call B Dry. There is a 60% chance of rain today, mostly cloudy, with a high of 81 and a low around 68. Mostly cloudy tomorrow with a 60% chance of rain, a high of 84 and a low around 69. Mostly cloudy on Wednesday, more rain and a high in the mid 80s. Weather on the Swain event is brought to you by Be Dry. If your basement is wet or cracked, Be Dry can help. BeDry.com. Touchdown or turnover is up next on the Swain event. It's Christmas in July at Better Mattress. Better Mattress has teamed up with Home Depot and with select purchases, you can get a free Weber grill or choose a free adjustable base or a free headboard footboard while supplies last. Better Mattress has brands you know like Tempur-Pedic and Sealy, plus the brand I love, the Better Mattress brand, handcrafted in East Tennessee. Go to Better Mattress and get a free adjustable base free headboard footboard, or free Weber grill while supplies last. Six area locations, BEDRmattress.com. When I made the move to my own studio, I was worried about this. I was worried about that. I was worried about, hey, did I get this piece of equipment? Did I get that piece of equipment? Does that sound good? Does that not sound good? One thing I didn't have to worry about, that was office furniture, because office furniture outfitters met my furniture needs. With a 50,000 square foot facility, they have East Tennessee's largest selection and are the best value for new and used office furniture. Located in Knoxville, it's easy to find everything you need for your new space, including desks, file cabinets, chairs, conference tables, and more. Office Furniture Outfitters is turnkey. They came to my place, we mapped everything out that was needed, they delivered, and get this, set everything up. To learn more about what Office Furniture Outfitters can do for you, log on to OFONOX.com. That's OFONOX.com. Nobody likes surprises, so switch to Erie Rate Lock. Get a great rate that stays that way even after an accident, ticket, or inflation. In fact, it's locked until you change a car, driver, or your address. Your Erie agent in Knoxville is in SureFit RM. Get a quote at 865-684-4900. That's 865-684-4900. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage. It's not available in all states. All right, team, listen up. It's tailgating time again in Tennessee. But most importantly, team, you're going to need to refine that tailgate and the truck it's attached to. With a refinanced auto loan with Alcoa Tan Federal Credit Union with their Got That promotion, they'll give you up to $500 for your debt. Are you serious, coach? That's right, Johnny. Alcoa Tan will pay you up to $500 for your debt. Now, let's get out there and spread the word. Say it with me. Alcoa Tan, Alcoa Tan, Alcoa Tan. ATFCU is an equal housing lender. Touchdown or Turnover is backed by Alcorton Federal Credit Union, a place where you belong. Touchdown Turnover backed by Alcorton Federal Credit Union, a place where you belong, better rates and better service. Damn Mullen, man. Woo! Dan... Mullen over the weekend. Florida tweet out a picture. Dan Mullen squatting down, bending down with two Florida prospects. These Florida prospects had goals in their mouth and they were pointing at their teeth. Dan Mullen was bending down with these prospects, pointing at his teeth. The only thing is, he didn't have any goals. Literally really fun. He had on some shoes that look really, look, look, look really silly too. Uh, they said Florida Gators on them. Like, what is this, man? What? It, what I mean, what is this? 
what is it, Kmart? Don't come for me, Kmart. Don't come for me. Just saying. <laughs> I mean, what, what is going on here, Dan? The Kmart Mafia. And, and then... You knock on your door. And then, you know, you know, Dan, just, just, you know, just wear some, some, some looser pants. That's all. We, I've, I've heard <laughs> jokes about Jerry Pruitt, his, his pants. Um, Jeremy doesn't really care too much about what he wears. Okay, it's about football. You can kind of tell by some of the some of the photos over the spring and the summer. But I'll tell you one thing: if, if Pruitt were to squat down like Dan Mullen, he wouldn't have a uh, an issue there in the in the, in the uh, lower region. With uh, <laughs> yeah, Pru- Pruitt rocks those pleated dad pants. Yeah, plenty of room. Plenty of yeah, room. Pl- plenty of plenty of room there. Um, touchdown turnover. The University of Florida will finish in the top 15 in the recruiting rankings. Will they finish in the top 15? According to rivals, they are 42nd in the country. According to 247, they are 37th with only 11 amendments. Okay, three star players, they have seven of those, and then they have four four star players committed according to two, four, seven. Do you think Florida will finish up in the top 15? Touchdown turnover. I say turnover. Um, I know, I definitely think they'll finish in the top 20, top 25. I mean, it's the University of Florida. I could be the head coach and I would land a top 25 recruiting class. That's how easy it is to recruit. With, or, with or without the moose knuckle. I'm not answering that. How big of a factor is it, truly? Though? That's, Same. that's I don't, never mind. I'm not gonna go there. Um, <laughs> uh, but I follow Thomas Goldcamp on Twitter. Um, he does a great job of covering Florida for 247, and he has been getting lit up with fans complaining about uh, where Florida is in recruiting right now, and there's no definite signs of. Florida turning it around um, because Jim McElwain in two or, two or three of the years that he was there, they always got off to a slow start in recruiting. And during the summer, Gold Camp was like, hey, look at these guys that Florida is in on. They're probably going to commit, but you got to wait till around signing day. There's not really those guys that you can point to in this year's class for Florida. They don't have the big four or five star that they're holding out for. Um, at least that I have seen. Um, so I don't know that they have like a big fish in the water that they're going to reel in that's going to put them over the edge for a top 15, especially with the way that uh, Georgia's getting everybody from the state of Georgia, um, at least the top five-star guys from the state of Georgia. Um, Tennessee is going to be a top 15 class. Texas A&M is going to be a top 15 class. So you have new teams in there that haven't really been in there in the last couple of years that – going to push Florida down a little bit. So I say turnover. I don't think there's enough big fish to go get right now for Florida. Turnover for me too. Um, and it's genuinely surprising. But uh, I guess I, I look at it. I mean, Dan Mullen, at, at Mississippi State, he recruited. He learned how to and then recruited very specifically for Mississippi State, which was a lot of kids from the state of Mississippi, a lot of kids basically in Alabama that Alabama didn't want. It was a lot of that. And so I kind of wonder, has he lost his touch with recruiting as a whole? Uh, You know, on a larger scale outside of just that, how he was recruiting at MSU. Um, I mean, I I look at the guys that they have on the line right now, and they're they're top targets. I mean, I think they'll they'll likely land maybe one one five-star kid and then uh, a few more four-stars. But, yeah, I think – Sort of similar to Tennessee, it's going to be – class is going to be comprised mostly of three stars, and <laughs> I mean, that that's not Florida's standard, but it is what it is with Mullen right now. Just whatever is, is going on. Like I said, if he's – if he got too set in his ways over there at Mississippi State and doesn't know how to do it anymore or what, uh, yeah, I think that they end up outside of the, the top 15, and what that means for the future of Florida football, I don't know. Mullen's a good coach. We'll see, but um, – it's it's interesting nonetheless, that's for sure. We we got we have to 
separate the bad three stars from the from the good ones. The three stars that get you fired, and three stars that uh, pretty much you know, are the backbone of your team. Win your football games. Yeah. So um, I, I don't want to put all the three stars in, in the same boat because they're not they're not the same. But yeah, Dan Mullen. I say I say turnover too. I agree with with you guys. Um, so. What year was that? 2000. I want to say, let's say 15. 2015, there was a player that was looking at Tennessee. And the assistant coach had it taken care of. Like This kid was coming, and the assistant coach and others told the head coach, don't ruin it by being corny, doing all the things that you do. By telling your kid that you love him and doing all the extra stuff. Because this kid can read through that. He's super real. He's he's he sees that. He's been through the recruiting process already. Don't do it. Like, please. Just don't do the hokey pokey stuff that you do with some of these other high school kids. They they may fall for it. Don't do it. And um I think about Dan Mullen. I think about how if I was coming out, it would it would kind of alarm me in a way that would make me not want to go to Florida because Dan Mullen's trying too hard. Like when someone tries too hard, it puts up antennas. It's like when someone asks you to do something and they're sweating you and they want you to do it so bad, it's like, man, wait a minute. Why why do you want this so bad? Like it must be something else. Like when you walk into a store and that salesperson is hounding you and hounding you and hounding you, it makes you want to deal with someone else, right? You understand they work on commission. You get that. You respect that. But when they're on you all the time, the whole time you're there, hey, you need some help? Hey, you want you want to buy this? Hey, you want some help? You need some help? Hey, can I help you? Hey, dude, I'm looking right now. Leave me alone. When I'm ready, I'll come holler at you, okay? It just, it just, it rubs you the wrong way. Dan Mullen seems like that guy. He just, he tries so hard. He's, Dude, he, he's that at friend you. that blows up your phone continuously. Bro, you're pointing at your, your teeth. You don't even have any grills in. What are you doing? You look ridiculous. And he just, he just tries so hard. I always have to preface this when I say it because he's a good football coach. Number one, he's a good football coach. I know where you're going, and I agree. But, dude, he's Butch Jones 2.0. In terms of corniness off oh. the field, 100%. He's so corny. He's, he's so corny. corny. Which is why I, I find it so interesting that he is the head coach at the University of Florida. I mean, you've seen seven, eight players get into some off-the-field troubles, some harsher than others, obviously. But there's been six, seven, eight players that – have been in the news lately, and, and then you've got Dan Mullen, who is responsible for um, connecting with these type of players. I mean, the photo from SEC Media Days that t- that 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 time where he's he has his foot up on the table and he's leaning back just to show off his shoes, bro. You getting your ass mopped out here in recruiting? What what are you doing? He is who cares about your shoes, man. He is the epitome of cousin Eddie. He is Bush Jones two point oh. I mean, Eddie. he is. Looks like Cousin Eddie, acts like Cousin Eddie. You serious, Clark? All of the above. And I know this is hard for Charlie to hear because Charlie has a sweater at home with Dan Mullen's face knitted on it. I do. It's beautiful. <coughs> so I, I I know this is hard for you to – this is a hard conversation for you, Charlie. I mean, I can look at Dan Mullen for what he is. And, and as of right now, I mean, li- like you said, Good football coach. He made it work at Mississippi State. If you can make it work at Mississippi State, you're basically a miracle worker. I mean, that is one of the toughest places to coach in America. He's a good. He's a good coach. No, but I, I mean, you can still look at him and say what he is. Dude, it's cornball. I mean, he just is. He just. It really, really worked at Mississippi State. It don't work in. It don't work with the big boys. No, because. You are recruiting against real dudes. I mean, coaches who are comfortable in their own skin, they're very confident. They don't need those gimmicks. You're recruiting, and folks don't want to realize this because, you know, they think that Florida's just recruiting in the SEC. 
but you're recruiting against Willie Taggart, one of the coolest dudes in in college football. You're you recruiting against Mark Rick, and Mark Rick get a hold of your grandma or oh, your it's mama. Over. It's over. Oh, it's over. It is over. Down to earth. Over. It is over. So Dan Mullins is recruiting against those guys, and then he's recruiting against Tennessees and the Georgias and, and the South Carolinas and all that. So. You know, Nathaniel Rutherford from RTI says it's all fun and games now, poking fun at Florida for their recruiting, but they'll be fine in the long run. They usually get some, uh, they get some, you know, some flips there late in the in a, in a, in, a, in the um, recruiting process for in-state players, and that's that's probably going to happen. But here, here's where I say it's still a shame of what Dan Mullen is doing right now. When I look at Florida, the state of Florida. You have IMG Academy. It's the closest to you than Miami, and I want to say maybe maybe right there around Florida State. You know, it might be close, maybe the same distance or whatever. Um, but Miami is definitely far from IMG Academy. But you're up there. I think Florida State may be closer. Um, but you're right there with, with IMG. That's that's in your backyard. Um, you have one of the top five best places to recruit in state texas louisiana california georgia florida is right there right there there's no way you should be where you are right now especially with the early signing period in play this is the second year of the early signing period so you know what to expect now last year it caught you by surprise it caught all of us by surprise and tennessee was you know we were going through a coaching search and found a coach and was trying to recruit during the early signing period, which was really, really tough. But if you are Florida, with all that in-state talent, all that in-state talent, there's no way you should be in this position. So, yeah, Florida may find themselves jumping into the top 20 and the top 15. But when Dan – when uh, not Dan Mullen, but when Urban Meyer was there as head coach, they didn't have these problems. No, IMG is closer to Miami than it is Florida State. It is? Okay. It's south of Tampa. Okay. IMG is in uh, Bradenton. Bradenton. Yep, and it's two, but it's closest to Gainesville, two okay. and a half hours. And Got I'll it. say this: you mentioned everybody that he's recruiting against in Florida. The big dogs he's recruiting against Florida, but if Miami and Florida State and Georgia and Tennessee are scooping the big guys out of Tennessee or out of the state of Florida, you you have to kind of look for those guys that are. Diamond in the rough, the guys that are being overlooked, the Brandon Johnsons who are, who is a D1 receiver, an SEC type receiver, but he's playing behind a guy that's going to Ohio State and a guy that's going to Miami. And when you're when you're looking for those diamond in the rough, you know who you're recruiting against now in the state of Florida, Lane Kiffin, Josh Heupel. Um, that's Palmer. Palmer, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the guy FIU, uh, Butch. Butch Davis. Butch Davis. Yeah. yeah. Three guys that. Obviously, if you're going up against them for a four or five star, you're probably going to win just because you're Florida. They're FAU, FIU, UCF. But if you're looking for those three stars, they may look at UCF under Josh Heupel and his offense, Lane Kiffin and his offense, and be like, I can go there and play day one. And their I, offense maybe make it to the league. I hate to say this, but <clears throat> Florida, and Florida's had way more success than we've had you know, in the last, last 10 years. It's definitely not been up to their standard. But maybe they suffer from the same thing, is that they assume that the kids there in Florida just automatically love Florida. Just like we assume that people, the kids love Tennessee, and they don't realize that a lot of kids was not born when Tennessee won the championship. They don't, I mean, they don't, they don't know. They don't, they don't know anything about the tradition at, at, at Tennessee. Well, Florida's been struggling the last couple of years. You know, Will Muschamp, and now... Uh, you know, Jim McElwain. So th their lasting memories of Florida is not competing for a championship. And I think sometimes you, you, as a school, you automatically assume that, yeah, these kids know, they, they know who we are. I mean, we're a national brand. And Florida has, you know, they have national brand power. They do. But it's not working right now. And it's very surprising with all the talent in that state. Like Tennessee, we got to be creative. We got to get to Atlanta. We got to go to Charlotte. We got to go Ohio. We understand that. We've been doing it for decades. It's nothing new. But for Florida to struggle in their own state the way they've been struggling um, is very alarming. And Dan Mullen just comes across as, as, a, as a cornball. He just does. He just comes across as a cornball. 
865-200-5503, B-Drive Waterproofing Hotline. Stay with us. At some point in your life, you're going to need an attorney. You need a guy like Jerrica Steele with the law firm of Butler, Vines, and Babb. Jerrica Steele is East Tennessee born, and he understands what giving his all truly means. To Jared, every case is big, and every client is important. He will aggressively push your case to make sure you are quickly paid every dollar that you deserve. Give Jared Castillo a call, 865-244-3933, and talk with him directly. His office is located at 2701 Kingston Pike. So if you've been injured in a car wreck, let Jared Castillo and Butler Vines and Bab fight for you. Top 100 Barbecue Restaurant Dead End Barbecue has a new slew of daily specials. Enjoy a different special meal every day, like the Chipotle Chicken Salad, the Chicken Tender Sandwich, or the Kitchen Sink Burrito filled with brisket, pulled pork, and chicken, not to mention queso, jalapenos, and more. It's called the Kitchen Sink for a reason. Dead End isn't stopping at your plate, though. Be sure to check out their new summer drink offerings, including the Big Orange Crush, My Clementine, or the Tequila Squirt. There is always something new at Dead End Barbecue. Located off of Sutherland Avenue, Dead End Barbecue. The summer flavor search is over. You're driving home, flashing blue lights in your rearview mirror. The next thing you know, you're being arrested for DUI. Be responsible, but remember, just because you're arrested doesn't mean you're guilty. Call DUI and criminal defense attorney Marcos Garza. Put this number in your phone right now, 865-540-8300, because you never know when you or a friend will need it. Don't say guilty, say Garza. 865-540-8300 and GarzaLaw.com. We have all made the mistake of dropping or breaking our smartphones. See? But did you know that you can have it repaired for a fraction of the cost that it takes to replace it? Well, you can, because iDrop is the area's leading mobile repair store, home of the one hour or less phone repair, one year parts warranty, and number one customer service. Broken screens, cracked cameras, charging ports, batteries, you break it, we'll fix it. If you didn't break your phone, protect it with one of our leading accessories such as LifeProof, OtterBox, UAG, and Sipico, Caseology, and Spec. Visit our West Hills location at 7115 Kingston Pike between Office Depot and Hardy's. Or call 865-888-9740 and speak with our trained technician to see how we can get your phone working today. Nobody likes surprises, so switch to Erie Rate Lock. Get a great rate that stays that way, even after an accident, ticket, or inflation. In fact, it's locked until you change a car, driver, or your address. Your Erie agent in Knoxville is in SureFit RM. Get a quote at 865-684-4900. That's 865-684-4900. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. Looking for a different way to enjoy the Swain event? Then check out Swain Event TV, brought to you by Toyota Knoxville. Follow the show on Periscope and Facebook Live. When you are at the University of Florida, there's no reason to be 42nd in the country in recruiting or 37th in the country in recruiting right now. With the early signing period around the corner, there is no way. And I'm sorry, the, the gimmicks are they're just not working. You're, you're recruiting against, against Mark Rick. You are recruiting against um, Willie Taggart in that state. The gimmicks, it's, not, it's, it's just not going to work. When Urban Meyer was there, here's Urban Meyer coming from Utah. Dan Mulligan's coming from inside the conference where he had already proved that he can coach in this conference. Took a team to the number one ranking at Mississippi State. Dak Prescott developed him. Look where he is right now at the Dallas Cowboys. 
Nick Fitz, uh, Fitzgerald, what he's doing. I mean, you got proof right in, inside the conference. So an insider comes in as your head coach, a guy that already was there as offense coordinator, that was there when Urban was there recruiting at a high level. So you bring in Dan Mullen, who knows everything about how to recruit for Florida because he did it as offense coordinator. Or well, should know how to. Well, Urban Meyer comes in. And this is before Urban Meyer is Urban Meyer now. But Urban Meyer came in 2005. It was his first year. So I'm not going to even count the 05 recruiting class because we know when you get hired, you put it in together. It's not really your, your first full recruiting class. But here's 06, Urban Meyer. Second in the country, first in the SEC. 07, first in the country, first in the SEC. 08, fifth in the country, second in the SEC. 09, seventh in the country, fourth in the SEC. And then 2010, his last season, first in the country, first in the SEC. So three out of the five years of Dan, uh, the Urban Meyer was there, um, sorry, five out of the six years that he was there, he was first in the conference of recruiting. That is how you recruit in the state of Florida. Dude. If you are at Florida, if, you, oh if you're doing it right. So I just pulled up the two thousand. this classes, this current recruiting class, which is what, 2019? Mm -hmm. they all, they're all starting to run together to me as I get older now. 19, 19. Um, I pulled up the state rankings in the state of Florida. Yes. The first, the highest ranked player that Florida has committed within the state is 42nd. They don't have a single player in the top 40 in the state committed. And this goes back to a conversation you and I had earlier in the show. Oh, not during the show, but during a break earlier in the show. Georgia is sweeping the rug in Florida right now. The number one overall player in the state, Nolan Smith, five-star, goes to IMG, committed to Georgia. Um, number seven player in the state, uh, Ryan Davis, committed to Georgia. Four-star outside linebacker. I believe he was a guy that committed either yesterday or about a week ago. He recently committed. But then you have Clemson coming inside the state and going down in Miami and landing a five-star receiver. Florida State, Miami, um, just – Sweeping kids left and right. Obviously, you have Ohio State and Urban's connection still to the state of Florida. You have Mario Cristobal in the state of Florida, even though he's out at Oregon now. Um, you have Penn State coming down to Hollywood, Florida. Florida is nowhere to be found. You have Oklahoma, Arkansas. I mean, it's truly an embarrassment. And I know we're still in wait-and-see mode because, like Nathaniel said, Signing day is a long ways away. Th th things can change. And but, but still. This yeah. is a bad sign. Even, yeah. even a guy like Chris Bogle, Bogle, have we figured out how to say his last name yet? Bogle. Bogle. Chris Bogle, number six overall player in the state of Florida right now. He looks like he's going to Florida State or Tennessee. Yep. Things, aren't, things aren't looking good right now. And while that's a positive sign for Tennessee, on the flip side of things, what Georgia is doing right now, in my opinion, is downright scary because, in my opinion, what Kirby is building at Georgia right now is a complete monster. I, I, I'm not – off the air, I did say I thought he was building Alabama 2.0. I do think that's a little over the top because what Nick Saban has built as at Alabama is the greatest dynasty in all of college football, and I don't think it's arguable, in my opinion. Um, so I do think that's too much to put on Kirby at this point. But I think he's getting pretty daggum close to building a replicate version of what Alabama is. And what's scary is that this current upcoming season is probably going to be Tennessee's – maybe not Tennessee's, but the SEC East's best shot at Georgia. This will be the – what's the word? The 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 downest I don't think Georgia so. will be for a long time, in my opinion. Uh, and, there, and what's scary about that is Georgia's going to be pretty good this year. They're gonna be good, absolutely. They should. They should be good. Um, but I can't. I cannot downplay the the absence of a Sonny Michelle or Nick Chubb, uh, captains on that football team. Roquan Smith, captain, uh, losing guys like that. Lorenzo Carter. I'm sorry, you don't you don't lose guys like that. And just because you have a really good recruiting class, just automatically assume they're gonna get back to that point. Right. Uh, that would be disrespectful to to those folks mm -hmm. uh, who put in so much work, who show so much great leadership. Georgia reminds me right now of what Ole Miss was doing in recruiting. <laughs> it's very, very, very similar. How so? You mean where you give them a little side eye like, 
be, how, be, be, how are you doing this? Like that? Because be, that was how I perceived because, it. Because I know Georgia, it's more believable because they're Georgia and they have a lot of in-state talent. But when you're getting – and we're, we're in a day and age where there's more parity now than ever before as far as college schools. You can, you can go anywhere and get to the league if you want to. I mean, it's not like it was 50 years ago when it was only Oklahoma and Texas and this school and that school. No, you can you, – I mean, there's more schools getting into it in the mix, and you can go anywhere and, and, and be seen and get to the NFL. But Georgia's taking the number one player in Louisiana out. I mean, that's, that's – Louisiana doesn't necessarily allow that to happen. I know they have a prior relationship, but it's the amount of, of – Five star players they're getting, like you can't tell me you're not raising your eyebrow going, whoa, 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 yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa this is this is this is very similar. And again, it's more believable because Georgia has in state talent. Georgia uh, just went to and played for a national championship. It's, it's more believable. But if you're Georgia, you better make sure everything is on the, on the up and up. You better make sure. You better make sure your stuff is tight. Yeah, I'm. I get what you're saying, but I, I don't view it as such because right now Georgia has five five star committed uh, to the Bulldogs right now, and three of them are from the state of Georgia. Nolan Smith, the guy who's at IMG, he's originally from Georgia, so that's four or five from Georgia. And then, right to me, it's not as funky to see um, one of the top or the top recruit in the state of Louisiana go to a different school right now, especially when it's a school like Georgia because Georgia is coming off an SEC championship. They're coming off a national championship appearance. Everything I, looks I just said beautiful the, yeah. in, the, in Georgia right now. And on top of that, LSU and Coach O are fumbling that. I get it. I mean, that's Dan Mullen 2.0 over in Baton Rouge right now. Yeah. Um, so, to me, I, I'm not giving it the side eye because of the success that Kirby has had to this point. Um and they have a good vibe going on. And, the, and I hate saying all this. I really do. But it, we got to be honest with ourselves. What Kirby is doing right now is pretty remarkable, yeah. especially where they were just two seasons ago. It's remarkable. Y'all, what you, what you hear is someone that's very naive. Five, five stars in July. I don't care if you're from Georgia or not. What you're doing deserves a side eye. Uh, I'm not you just, a side you eye. You just make sure – you got to make sure all your stuff is tight. That's all I'm saying. You better make sure your stuff is tight. I mean, that's fair. I mean, every recruit in the country f is getting money from every school in the country. So I'm not. Hey, I'm not going to say that. I'm just saying, you just better make sure your stuff is tight, Georgia. Yeah, I'm, I'm not giving. Every, 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 everyone uh, does not follow the rules by the the entire book um, because the book is ridiculous. But all I'm saying is, you better make sure your stuff is tight when you recruit at a high level like this. You just better make sure that you don't leave any cracks because there they, you can find something if you really, 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 really wanted to. In the NCAA, they only react when things are basically thrown in, into their lap. They won't react. Uh, they won't be proactive at all. They're always reactive. So um, I I get it. If if you know if Georgia's recruiting like this, uh, there's some folks that go, oh well, I mean, it's, hey, I mean, it's just just what they're supposed to do. Just make sure your stuff is tight, Georgia. That's all I'm saying. Just don't don't have a situation like Ole Miss had with uh, uh what was the kid's name? Where it all came unraveled. Larry No, uh, uh, Leon, the, Dion, Leon Lewis. Yeah, Leon Lewis. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just just don't have one of those where it gives the NSA a reason to you know come, come just, hawk around just, in your business. I just don't understand. I I don't understand the Ole Miss comparison because Laquan Treble, he was the number one receiver that year, correct? Because they were getting the top player at every position. Just, I mean, it was it was like didn't matter where they were from. Yeah, it was back to back to back. And I know. get these kids from Georgia, and but but still, there there's there's been Georgia's doing things that's never been done in recruiting right now. Never been done recruiting right now. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say too much, Ben, because. Um, It would be irresponsible for me to say anything further. I mean, right, if, where, where I sit I mean, right now with nothing, you know, nothing, no allegations, nothing like that. I'm just saying you better make sure that you're doing everything on the up and up, uh, that you got your stuff, that you got your stuff really, really tight because Alabama has everything tight. 
they survive the, the suit stuff. You see pictures of guys with new cars and all that stuff. But you're not going to catch Alabama because they have it locked down. There's a system. Jeremy Pruitt uh, understands, you know, that, that system. Um, Kirby Smart understands that system. Everybody understands that system in Alabama. So you just better be careful when you have your own program that you – do everything on the up and up. That's that's all I'm that's all I'm gonna say about that. But if you, I think, would be very naive to not go. Dang, Georgia. Ooh, Georgia, man. This show's got a lot of players. I think and, it's also uh, naive to not kind of look at what they're doing and that's, give them some kudos as well. That's fine. I, I I give it. I just I just said that they went and played for national championship. So you understand that they play for national championship. So there is. Um, you have the winning aspect of it. I'm not accusing them of doing anything. All I'm saying is when you recruit at this level, you're going to get attention, and you got to make sure you're doing everything right because if you're not, the smallest little crack can turn to a, a break. Things can unravel if you're not doing everything tight. Tennessee got themselves in trouble because of a small little barbecue, and it put the eyes on football and basketball. So I'm not accusing Georgia of doing anything. I'm just saying you just got to make sure everything is, is, is on up and up if you're Georgia. That's all. Swain Event, stay with us. JC's Tree and Landscaping Service specializes in quality tree work done at an affordable price. Trimming and removing trees are their specialty. They also offer other services like land clearing, stump grinding, crane services, and all of your basic landscaping needs for both commercial and residential. JC's will give you a free estimate and beat any written quote by a competitor to guarantee that you get the lowest price around. Don't risk your land with the fly-by-night service. JC's Tree and Landscaping is licensed and insured. Give them a call at 865-599-3799. Hey, it's Jason Swain. There's a lot of people talking about testosterone, but do your homework and go to a medical provider that you trust and that specializes in testosterone. I got my levels tested at the Low T Center. Their physicians exclusively diagnose and treat men with Low T. At the Low T Center, it's quick and easy. Treatment is even covered by most health insurance. Call 865-392-1388 or go to LowTCenter.com. Craving homemade flavors that don't take hours in the kitchen? Mrs. Grissom's cheese spreads and chicken salads are the perfect go-to. Ready-to-eat meals and snacks found in the meat or dairy section at the grocery store with flavors of home in every bite. Whether you crave the classic Mrs. Grissom's pimento cheese or the gold gluten-free select cranberry pecan chicken salad, enjoy the sweet taste of a home-cooked meal in every container. Select the best. Select Mrs. Grissom's. Eight six five two hundred fifty five zero three B Drive Waterproofing Hotline. Hour two in the Low T Center Studio of the Swain Event. Today's lunch special at Dead End Barbecue is the Chipotle Chicken Salad, hand pulled chicken, smoked chicken actually, hand pulled smoked chicken, tossed with Chipotle mayo, fresh veggies served on a fresh baked flour head Parker House bun. And a seasonal side there at Dead End Barbecue. That is the lunch special at Top 100 Barbecue Restaurant, Dead End Barbecue. Um, we started the show talking about the A.J. Johnson trial, uh, Mike Williams trial. They were found not guilty and wanted to kind of wait to the second hour a little bit later um, because I know school starts next week here in Knox County. I know in Blount County, school started like last week. And so I'm always very uh, conscious of conversations that we have when we know that parents are taking the kids to school. And 
Um, if you wanted me to start the conversation, start the show talking about A.J. Johnson's trial and you're upset, I'm sorry, but just understand that it was consciously done that way uh, because I, you know, I'm a parent and I, I try to shield my kids from things that they hear or see as much as I can. I know it's harder today than ever before, but this is a conversation that, that is going to take place uh, around sports here in Knoxville around the SEC because it involves two SEC players. It involves two Tennessee players. And so you're not going to be able to not talk about it, but uh, I felt I did the best the best thing I could do by waiting so much to talk about it here in, in hour two and hour three. But um, let's get to the phones, and then we'll come back and um, you know kind of kind of talk about this A.J. Johnson thing because you know, we, we have an um, we, we, we a, a issue here. We got some guys that lost some time that they're never going to get back. They lost the opportunities to play at the next level. Um, that probably still won't be viewed as pristine as someone else who wasn't accused. And so we we, we got to definitely talk about, about kind of what's at stake and, and what's going to happen moving forward and how just the charges will affect these young men moving forward. Uh, but first, let's get to Rod. Rod, good morning. What's going on, Jason? Hey, Rod, how you doing, man? I'm with you on the uh, the Georgia the Georgia thing and the the five star recruits. What gets me is uh, kind of like Wanye. I want to stand out and be my own person. There's no way all these five star recruits that are going to Georgia can expect to play first year. They're gonna sit behind two years, you know, players. I don't get that. So something else is going on. Well, Rod. Rod, I I do understand a player. Let's let's just say, if you're a high school player, and I can show you examples, I can prove to you with stats that, yeah, you may not play as much as you want to. You may not come in day one, but if you have a goal of playing at the NFL, this program, I mean Alabama, has a a a a, a track. Record. They have a blueprint, a step-by-step plan to get you in the NFL. And here's the proof we do it better than anybody. So if you're willing to develop and work for a year, year and a half, and then get on the field, if I can prove to you that I'm going to get you to the NFL, is it worth that wait? I would say, yeah, I would. Now, if Georgia can do the same thing, if Georgia can say the same thing and prove the same you know, success, uh, the same results, then I understand a kid going, yeah, man, I, w- I would rather uh, develop and play and, and, you know, when I'm ready and have a chance at the league than to, throw, be, be, than to be thrown in like Josh Dobbs. Because Josh Dobbs was thrown in the deep end and he wasn't ready to swim. And that affected him. That probably hampered his development a little bit. So, you sure. know, for some kids, playing early is the priority, you know. I want to play. I don't want to sit behind somebody. I don't want to get caught to the politics. I don't want to get caught into that. I want to play. But for some other kids, they're like, you know what? Hey, the, it's, it's about the bigger picture. It's about the bigger but, picture. It's not the, the short picture, the short side of picture, which is playing early. The bigger picture is getting to where I want to be. The final destination is, is the NFL. If this school can help me get there better than any other school, then I need to go there. I, I understand it to a certain extent, Rod. But in the same token, Jason, we all know that there are players that have played for Alabama and Georgia that have been five stars that yes. have also washed out and never made it to the NFL. Absolutely. Absolutely. But there's also examples of, of the opposites. And you just have to decide if when you are a quarterback or when you are a running back or w- whatever position you play, you have to decide, are you going to go into it and be Alvin Kamara and find yourself, you know, getting so frustrated and, you know, being out of character and then having to transfer to find yourself? Uh, or are you going to come in like a Damian Harris Harris did when there was, you know, Heisman Trophy right. winners and all kind of ballers and then still find your way, develop, and now when your time has come, boom, here it is. Landon Collins didn't come in. He didn't start early. Uh, Reggie Ragland didn't come in and start early. I mean, but look where they are right now. So do you want that path or do you want the path of Jalen Hurd where you come in and you are the man the day you step on campus. I really, I really just depends. I think it depends on the player, the position they play, um, and kind of their long-term goal. Well, 
I just love the path we're on right now with Pruitt. So, y'all enjoy the I enjoy the show. Y'all have a great day. Hey, thank you, Rod. Great, great phone call. You are saying everything that I think Tennessee coaches are saying to players. You just said everything that every coach who's recruiting against Georgia and Alabama are saying. I truly believe that. I truly believe if, if you are recruiting against Georgia and Alabama, there's something you can sell that they can't, and that is immediate playing time. And most kids are going to say, I'll take that. I will take immediate playing time. I will. But I'll tell you right now, if I was being recruited and a coach laid down to me, you want you want to major in the minors or do you want to major in the majors? The minors is the short term, the short term um, reward, which is playing right now. The long term reward reward is playing at the next level. And sometimes, if you take your short term reward, it can hamper the long term opportunity of getting to the NFL. What if you play early and you ain't ready to play and you get yourself hurt? And you're never the same player. Maybe if you maybe if you come in, you red shirt, you develop in the weight room, and physically you're stronger, mentally you're stronger, and then you're able to play as a red shirt freshman. And even then, maybe you play just a little bit, and then you come out your red shirt sophomore year, your third year in the program, and you you are a beast because you prepare and develop. So there's both sides of it, and I can sit here and really um, slant this narrative to Tennessee all day long and say, well, why would any kid want to? go to Alabama and Georgia right now because you, you'll sit. But I got to keep it real. There's there's benefits to both sides. 865-200-5503. Great phone call, Rod. For what? Coming up next. There is a 60% chance of rain today, mostly cloudy with a high of 81 and a low around 68. Mostly cloudy tomorrow with a 60% chance of rain, a high of 84 and a low around 69. Mostly cloudy on Wednesday, more rain and a high in the mid-80s. Weather on the Swain event is brought to you by B-Dry. If your basement is wet or cracked, B-Dry can help. BeeDry.com. Do you have cracks in your foundation? A wet basement or a nasty, leaky crawl space? Our listeners have heard about them on the Swain event for over a year, and now it's time to make the call. Give B-Dry Waterproofing and Foundation Repair the opportunity to fix your home's problem. Since 1958, that's right, nearly 60 years, B-Dry has been solving basement, crawl space, and foundation problems throughout the country. B-Dry only uses high-quality materials from reputable manufacturers. They back their installations with some of the best warranties in the industry to provide homeowners with added peace of mind. They are truly an A-plus company. Whenever you start experiencing a wet basement, leaky crawl space, or a cracked foundation, remember these three words. Better call B-Dry. Reach out to B-Dry today at 865-662-5238 to schedule your free appointment. That's 865-662-5238. Remember, better call be dry For what is coming up on the Swain event. Hey, Annie, you're the spokesperson for Toyota Knoxville, right? That's right. Why should I buy from Toyota Knoxville? Are you looking for new or used vehicles? Does it matter? No, because Toyota Knoxville has over 390 new Toyotas on the ground and over 350 pre-owned vehicles available to choose from. Okay, so big selection. And a lifetime warranty at no charge on all new and select pre-owned vehicles. A lifetime warranty. A non-factory limited lifetime powertrain warranty with unlimited miles. Plus, 30 years of experience in Knoxville, not just serving our customers, serving our community. And the buying experience? Hello, it's Toyota Knoxville. Read the reviews. Talk to anybody that's been there. Okay, okay. Where am I going? Toyota Knoxville is at I-40 and the Lover Road exit. Go to Parkside Drive. You can't miss it. Can I tell them Annie sent me? I wish you would. If you're passionate about the car you drive, come meet the people that are passionate about the way they sell at Toyota Knoxville. ToyotaKnoxville.com. Warranty good at participating dealers. At some point in your life, you're going to need an attorney. You need a guy like Jerry Castile with the law firm of Butler, Vines, and Bab. Jerry Castile is East Tennessee born, and he understands what giving his all truly means. To Jared, every case is big, and every client is important. He will aggressively push your case to make sure you are quickly paid every dollar that you deserve. Give Jerry Castile a call, 865-244-3933, and talk with him directly. His office is located at 27. 21 Kingston Pike. So if you've been injured in a car wreck, 
Let Jared Castile and Butler Vines and Bab fight for you. We have all made the mistake of dropping or breaking our smartphones. See? But did you know that you can have it repaired for a fraction of the cost that it takes to replace it? Well, you can, because iDrop is the area's leading mobile repair store, home of the one hour or less phone repair, one year parts warranty, and number one customer service. Broken screens, cracked cameras, charging ports, batteries, you break it, we'll fix it. If you didn't break your phone, protect it with one of our leading accessories such as LifeProof, OtterBox, UAG, Incipico, Caseology, and Spec. Visit our West Hills location at 7115 Kingston Pike between Office Depot and Hardy's. Or call 865-888-9740 and speak with our trained technicians to see how we can get your phone working today. You don't have to take an L just because you can't listen to the Swain event live. You can catch up on the podcast posted daily on the app, online, and on iTunes. Butch Jones replacing Philip Fulmer on the Jumbotron. For what? People getting drunk and stumbling into the wrong house. For what? Butch saying a chart told him to kick an extra point instead of going for two. For what? People who break the law while breaking the law. For what? All right, it's time for For What here in the Swain event. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Swain Event app, free for Android and Apple devices, 8.50 a.m., 100.9 FM, Rocky Top Sports, and you can stream us there online at SwainEvent.com. Swain Event TV, you can check us out on Facebook Live, Periscope, and YouTube. You can see the live broadcast here. Uh, that is driven by Toyota Knoxville and ToyotaKnoxville.com. All right, it's time for For What, where we highlight stupidity. Simple as that. What we got? I. You want to go first or you want me to? You got it. I'm giving athletes who have not scrubbed their Twitter accounts a for what. Um, this is in light of uh, tweets surfacing um, from national shortstop Trey Turner yesterday uh, for some years old homophobic and racially insensitive tweets. Um, and then not only Trey Turner, but Atlanta Braves pitcher Sean Newcomb, who um, had we had time earlier, he would have been the first person in the Swain event in Swain event history to receive an attaboy and a for what in the same day because yesterday I was at the Braves game and Sean Newcomb was one strike away from a no hitter and I will forever hate Los Angeles Dodger Chris Taylor for ruining my one chance to see a no hitter in person uh, for me. So Newcomb had two strikes, two outs. Got a base hit. No, no, it's gone. And as we saw with Dante DiVincenzo, uh, that was a football player. I can't remember which one it was. That tweets came up with him as well. Um, but they had this big moment in a big-time game. And hour or two later, insensitive, homophobic, racially charged tweets surface. Um, so, yes, I agree uh, with the sentiment that some have that, okay, these are kids. Um Let's give them a break. They deserve grace. They deserve forgiveness. I mean, they're kids. They're completely different people now than they were. And I agree with that. Everybody deserves a second chance. But I'm beginning not to feel bad for them because at this point, every single athlete on the planet, not even just athlete, public figure, even if you're not a public figure, everybody on the planet who has social media should have scrubbed their social media by now. Um, it takes five minutes to search back and make sure that you have never said anything such as Trey Turner or Sean Newcomb or Josh Hader or Dante DiVincenzo once tweeted out. I don't care if it's a stupid lyric. I don't care if your friend in high school at the time took your phone and tweeted something silly. Um, by now, you should have scrubbed it. You should have gone back and deleted it. And I don't, I'm starting to not feel bad for these guys whatsoever. At, at this point, it's becoming an epidemic. There, there's for what's on all sides of this. There's, there's for what, a couple of for what's for the actual guys with the tweets. For one, delete your tweets, check your Twitter, that's dumb. Don't have social media as a giant public figure and, and have dumb tweets in your past. That's one. Number two is just straight up don't tweet crappy stuff like that. Uh, that's a great place to start. But, of yes. course, it's obviously people change. You're 15 years old. But if you're if you're 15 right now and you listen, don't tweet crappy stuff. No. Uh, <laughs> there's a lesson. And then number three, uh, in in the for what line here, 
is to these journalists that are spending Lord knows how long trying to catch these guys and f for what reason? So that you can get an apology out of them? I mean, what, what are we what are we serving? What is what's the end goal here? Oh, Sean Newcomb called somebody gay one time. Okay, uh, that sucks. That's not cool. I'm not like good with that, but at the same time, it's not the why end of the you world. Look, why are you looking at his tweets from 2011? He's not calling people gay now. He's not, you know, as as a as an insult. You know, that's not like he's not doing these things present day. If he was doing them now, we got a problem. But that was 2011. What are, what are we doing? I I got for what for everybody involved in that story. But my uh, <laughs> my for what goes to I believe this is Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, it says a 74-year-old man uh, was ranting about a broken phone, and then he left the store and proceeded to drive his car through the front door of the cell phone store. <laughs> Charles Michael Hager was charged with assault with a deadly weapon and damaging property after he drove his 2006 Volkswagen Jetta into the store at a busy shopping center on Thursday night. A witness told 911 op operator that he saw Hager standing outside the store uh, demanding that it reopen to help him with his broken phone. He was demanding that he get his phone fixed. Oh, it's, uh, so I, I didn't even notice that in the story. The, the store was closed. Okay. Um, he said, my phone's not working. I need help. Open this damn door. And then he just uh, got back in his car, reared back, and drove it straight to the front of the store. And I assume he still has a broken phone. I guess the... The real amazing thing here is uh, he's a 74-year-old with uh, with a cell phone who knows enough about the cell phone to know that it's broken. I have a uh, – my, my grandmother, I believe she's 83. She has an iPhone. Um, and I'm not – while she knows how to receive and make calls, I'm not totally sure she would know that her phone's broken. Uh like it, could. it would take a while, right? Yeah, before she you was dial, like, you dial the number and it doesn't uh, <laughs> it doesn't start ringing and something's wrong with it. Yes, maybe that guy should just wait to 10 a.m. and go to I dropped uh, 71 exactly. 15 Kingston Pike, a uh, hundred no a hundred percent five star rating, over 410 Google reviews, five star rating, perfect rating. So that should tell you how iDrop operates with class, always going over and beyond to make sure your phone, your device, whatever you bring in to be fixed, that they achieve that for you. So uh, go to iDrop. Yeah, back on the um, the old tweets. And, you know, as a minority, as um, someone that, you know, could, could be offended by some, some racial language used by someone on uh, social media. Um, I look at these tweets from the Josh Allen, from a Josh Raider, and because of the way I've been raised, um, I want to know about your heart today. Is your heart right today? We, we grow, we evolve, we improve, we all said things. We've all probably had ideas about certain people that um, were not parallel to the, uh, the the ideas and the views that we have today. Did you grow? That's that's important for me. Hour three coming up around the corner. By now, you know that Muya has the best burgers in Knoxville. Their beef is never frozen. They have all-natural turkey burgers and black bean veggie burgers. Not to mention they make their buns in-house every day. But now, you can also get 100% all-beef hot dogs or, wait for it, all-natural chicken sandwiches. Trust me, these chicken sandwiches put chicken restaurants to shame. So stop into Muya and taste the difference. Located at 7301 Kingston Pike, right by Better Mattress.
Hey, Annie, you're the spokesperson for Toyota Knoxville, right? That's right. Why should I buy from Toyota Knoxville? Are you looking for new or used vehicles? Does it matter? No, because Toyota Knoxville has over 390 new Toyotas on the ground and over 350 pre-owned vehicles available to choose from. Okay, so big selection. And a lifetime warranty at no charge on all new and select pre-owned vehicles. A lifetime warranty. A non-factory limited lifetime powertrain warranty with unlimited miles. Plus, 30 years of experience in Knoxville, not just serving our customers, serving our community. And the buying experience? Hello, it's Toyota Knoxville. Read the reviews. Talk to anybody that's been there. Okay, okay. Where am I going? Toyota Knoxville is at I-40 and the Lover Road exit. Go to Parkside Drive. You can't miss it. Can I tell them Annie sent me? I wish you would. If you're passionate about the car you drive, come meet the people that are passionate about the way they sell at Toyota Knoxville. ToyotaKnoxville.com. Warranty good at participating dealers. There is a 60% chance of rain today, mostly cloudy, with a high of 81 and a low around 68. Mostly cloudy tomorrow with a 60% chance of rain, a high of 84 and a low around 69. Mostly cloudy on Wednesday, more rain and a high in the mid 80s. Weather on the Swain event is brought to you by Be Dry. If your basement is wet or cracked, Be Dry can help. BeDry.com. Hour 3 of the Swain event is brought to you by the Low T Center and LowTCenter.com. Do you know your numbers? Feel like you again. Let us help. If you want to chop it up with the fellas, call the Be Dry Waterproofing Hotline at 865-200-5503. I, I will say uh, I was I was a little uncomfortable with some of the, the the vitriol towards the the, the young lady, um, the accuser in the AJ Johnson Mike Williams case. Not saying that I was not upset that four years had passed, and you know, with the involvement of of, of Dre Bowles and you know everything that I've heard about kind of her history and with uh, you know players on our f- football team and her history with AJ Johnson. Uh, I was not. I was not happy. I I guess what I'm trying to say is, I felt I feel like her being embarrassed, her regretting um, that you know, what went on in that room should have been sniffed out by the professionals. Should have been sniffed out. Okay, we we have this evidence. <sighs> We got somebody trying to destroy their cell phone. We got folks trying to you know, not allow social media to be involved in the case. If we are not allowing these things to be involved to find the truth, then it smells a little fishy here. I'm, I think I'm more upset at the grown-ups here, the professionals that that just tried to ride this thing to trial and, and try to convict these young men. When the evidence was fishy from the get go, and so if I had any vitriol, it wouldn't be towards a young lady. Even though I'm so, I'm so disappointed that a young lady could make these accusations, and regardless of not, regardless if the 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 accused is innocent or guilty, it still affects them negatively moving forward. And I think about Von Pearson and how opportunities were uh, stripped away from him simply because of an allegation that came out to be uh, untrue. Vaughn was not al- allowed to work out with his team. He was not allowed to eat with his team. And he's basically treated like a criminal. While they were trying to find out the truth, and they found out the truth, and then they just, hey, come on back. I, I would feel a little funny about that. Like, you know me, you know my character. I said I did not do that, but you're still treating me like I did something. It would be hard for me to just jump back on and act like everything is cool in Von Pearson's case, to be honest. Very hard for me to do. Uh, but Von did that. He came back and, you know, finished his, his last year. And, you know, now he's playing arena ball. But for AJ, being a senior, and this happening towards the end of the year, I understand you don't want – a James Franklin situation where there's accusations made that he was involved and that he helped 
cover things up. Again, th those were accusations, and you, know, you want to distance yourself just in case uh, the kid is, is is guilty. But man, um, it, it's I'm like I'm still numb to my reactions. I, I really don't know. Should I be mad? Should I be happy? Should I be sad? Should I be you know upset? I mean. It's just so much crazy stuff that that happened during that night, and so many layers, like the Dre Bowles layer. Like, have we ever heard anything like that? Like the the whole Dre Bowles part of the story, where I mean, the, he really, 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 really liked this girl, and he was involved, encouraged the phone call to the police, and. Testimony that, that, that stated that he was in the background telling the, the officers to say you got raped. I mean, this dude, was a t he was a teammate. And then the, and then the team just kind of responding to him in a negative way because the, the team had knew the history between AJ and this girl. And I can, I can identify with that a little bit because when you're on a team, it's like a one big family. And you, you kind of know – who your teammate is messing with, okay? You know your teammate's girlfriend, and, and sometimes you know the girl that your teammate is messing around with. And then if you have a girl that's been with a few different football players, then the team pretty much knows, okay, this girl has been with different football players. So you know. And so when you have a player that comes in, and let's say he's new, and – he likes this girl who's maybe a year or two older than 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 you are and she's 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 you know she's had a, her experiences there your job as a teammate is to let the young guy know like hey man this, this girl's been here two years a lot of your teammates have already you know uh, been with her you probably want to avoid that situation and golly this is so weird this is a tough conversation. I feel bad for Dre Bowles because I, I here's I, why here's I'm why not I feel sure I do here's why I feel bad for him um, because if I remember correctly, when he encouraged the young lady to call the police, she was hysterically crying and telling him that she had been raped. Um, and he says, well, and then she say as well. Yeah, he's, I believe she got yeah. up there and said the same thing. Yeah, yeah. she. Oh yeah, I mean she she said, but these guys are found not. Not guilty I, because they feel like she, she didn't tell the truth. Okay? I, I'm going to choose to believe Dre Bowles because he got up there on the stand under oath. And you would hope he was telling the truth. And I, yeah. I would think that the son of a police officer would not perjure himself. So I'm going to choose Correct. to believe Dre Bowles. And if I put myself in his shoes in this situation, if a female is telling me that she was taken advantage of, I'm going to encourage her to call the police yeah, regardless me too. Yeah. of if they're my teammates, regardless if it's a family member, regardless if it's a best friend. I'm going to encourage her to call the police. Because that's so, the right thing, right thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah. And so taking Dre Bowl for his word under oath, I feel bad for him in that sense because now people are looking at him sideways as turning on his teammates and also taking up for somebody who, looking back on now in hindsight, was – under the on under the court of law was lying. Yeah, the, the the twist is that a lot of the guys told Dre Bowles about this right. young girl's history with other guys on the team. And so it comes across as man, you're just You're bitter. Exactly. You're just trying to get your teammate in trouble over a girl. You know, it should it you know, you hear the saying, you know, Bros before ladies, you know, you know what I'm saying. That, but in certain cases, it's it's the right thing over the wrong thing to do all the time. That's what the way it should be. There's a right right thing to do. There's a wrong thing to do. And Dre initially seemed like he did the right thing, but you have to understand that backstory too, right? Uh, and that history with Dre and this young lady and some of his teammates. Um, there was a time when you know Dre was publicly humiliated for his love of this girl while she was doing other things with other guys and you wonder you wonder if Dre you know got back at them and and I'm just only explaining why there was backlash from his teammates right 
because it appears if you just on the outside looking in, like, oh my God, these teammates are terrible. I mean, Dre just trying to do the right thing and 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 you know, they're just jumping on him just because he told on one of the teammates when it was, you know, it was the truth of what happened. So you have to understand the backstory there. Um now that the guilty verdict is is over and it's done with, what now? Like what do we what do we do now? Like, do we just say, okay, young lady, go live your life? Or do we say, no, young lady, you need to be held accountable and responsible if you, in fact, change someone's life because of the accusation? Because deep down in your heart, and she testified and said that she didn't say, like, she didn't say no. And she said, well, I guess – if I didn't say no, I guess it'd be hard for them to know that I didn't want to do it. That was in, in her testimony. In her testimony. She, she said it's like, that she did not expressly say no. Yeah, so if you didn't say no, how is – How are they supposed to know? How are they supposed to know? And so yeah. if – these men are found not guilty. What are we doing to the young lady to make sure that false accusations are not made in the future – because every time that we have the Reuben Foster situation where a girl falsely accused Reuben Foster of something and it comes out to not be untrue, not to be true, and then this, I think it really hurts and hinders the real victims, the real rape victims. Absolutely. It discourages them to come out and speak because they're going to be ridiculed. They're going to be poked at. They're going to be um, tossed to the side. Yeah, they, you know, they won't be – no one will believe them and only think that, you know, it's a money grab or you said he's a cleat chaser. We have to I th- make sure that this, this process has integrity when it comes up again and there's truly a rape victim. That's that's all I'm saying. And then you have AJ, like what is he doing? He was very classy, didn't didn't badmouth the, the accuser at all, but is he going to take legal action? against the accuser because he is an NFL draft pick. I mean, he's a, he, he's going to the NFL. If there is a, a – I guess what you call it, a preponderance of evidence. I don't know if that's the right legal term. But if there is enough evidence to suggest that this was, you know, a, a false accusation, there are definitely lanes of, of civil uh, – civil action that you could take um, in terms of trying to get your uh, <laughs> your restitution. Because, I mean, we already mentioned it earlier, in in one way, I mean, this girl came away with, what was it, $2, two million or something? No, or no, 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 no I'm she did part, part of the $2 million yeah, settlement. Yeah, it was, they uh, came out with some I chump f- change. I forget how many. Because uh, a couple uh, different girls. Yeah, it, it the was. The girl that was involved with Alexis Johnson. Six or seven. Yeah, I mean, they they split all that. Then you had court, you yeah, know, you had play your lawyer. So, I mean, they didn't get But she got money out of it, point she, being. She got money, yeah. And, and do you, if, if you're... AJ and Michael, do you, do you look at that well, and say that's that's not fair? I'm gonna there there's enough here for me to take legal action against you, and I'm gonna try to get that back. I don't see that that happening. If I'm either of these guys, I probably just don't ever want to even talk about this. I just want to move forward. Yeah, I I just want it to be in my past and be, have it be gone. But but I maybe never, I mean you never know. Maybe like, if you're Michael Williams, because Michael Williams didn't have the football future that AJ Johnson had. But even like forget about what could have been for AJ Johnson. How about going forward? Yep. Last week, Swain mentioned to me that he was out in the community and somebody who owns a business told him that he couldn't hire him now, even after if AJ is found guilty, just because of what could have been. Yep. It would be, I mean, it, yeah, it, it, it hurts it, them going forward. Yeah, it would be, something. Yeah, it would be tough because of, the, because of the nature of the job. It would be tough to have that guy like a face. Correct. You know, uh, of, of the company. So I mean. it, could, it could affect Michael and AJ going forward on getting jobs, even though they were proven – uh, by the court of law, not guilty. I mean, they, they could struggle to find jobs going forward. It's kind of like the Greg Shiano thing. Charlie, you mentioned it all the time when your problem was, with Shiano was that what could have been. Yeah. That's kind of – some people, if Charlie's owning a business one day, Charlie could view it if AJ or Michael comes to Charlie to find a job, Charlie could be like, what could have happened that night? Yeah. What what if they really did, did it, do it? Let's get to the phones and let's uh, let's get to Pete. Pete, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Hey, Pete. Uh, how you doing, man? Doing well. Uh, 
Jason, I want to thank you for making the starting comments you did about being careful with social media and what we do to all these young people's lives, including the young lady. There's only a couple of people in the world that know the whole truth and the real truth. And then the court system got involved, and that really is where any blame, if there is any, needs to lie. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it's interesting the, the hypocrisy you see on social media. If these were just two regular African-American gentlemen that weren't UT football players, we'd see a whole different side of the coin. I really believe that. And I'm glad they were found innocent if they're innocent because that's what the court system is there to do. But a lot of these fans are ripping this young lady, and even the ones that are ripping the justice system are the same. Some of these same fans are the ones that are ripping NFL players for protesting. And and the irony of that is these NFL players are protesting this exact topic mm. that the justice system for African Americans in particular is skewed and flawed. And so I just kind of want to point that out that you know we get on our fandom and we want to get on social media and we're quick to judge without really thinking through the whole process. So I'm happy for the young men that played for our university that they were found innocent. Uh, it does appear based on some of the information that's leaking out that. It, that it was a flimsy case, mm-hmm. but uh, just keeping in mind that that young lady has a family and a life, and even if she made a mistake, uh, to to if it was your daughter, you would probably want the process to play out. And for those young men, they were very blessed, and I and I think their status helped them in this case, um, because that they, I think the the court system in general is skewed. And I just wanted to kind of point out how social media can kind of jump all over the place. And these same people criticizing the, the justice system now are the same ones that would criticize the NFL players for standing up for this exact topic. Hey, I, I can't disagree with you there. You know, one thing I was disappointed in is that when these guys were found not guilty, you know, you had media using their mug shots. They're not guilty. I mean, they're, they're not guilty, so why are we using their mug shots to put out information about them moving forward? I, I didn't like that. I wasn't a big fan of that at all. Um, Pete, I can't, I can't disagree with you. I mean, I, I look at um, – it's, it's really easy to jump to conclusions when someone is accused of something. And, you know, Tennessee, you know, fans, most of them probably b- believed A.J. early because of, of his status. You know, I'm, I'm not too scared to, 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 to think that that probably was the case. Uh, but you also have a ton of folks who say innocent or guilty, football or not, you know – if you if you do the crime, you gotta do the time. And I said that from day one. I was hoping that AJ was not guilty, but if he was, hey man, you gotta go. You, you gotta go. Um, I don't think Pete said anything there that was that was wrong. Hey, you might have a different view. You may want to debate it. That's fine. Um, but sitting in in my chair, I don't think that um, that that Pete's wrong. I think that's that is why I agree with Pete. that I think that's why the players are protesting, and I think a lot of people are losing sight of the reason why. And I think the protest got hijacked, but that is the reason why. It's fair, fairness across the board, um, and unfortunately, it's, 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 it's not fair across the board when it comes to the justice system. And that's why these guys are, are protesting. Let's get to uh, Vol Nation. Vol Nation, good morning. Good morning, family. How are y'all doing now? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm just ready for some football. Man, I, I, you I'm, and me both. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm excited or happy uh, for these young men uh, being able to – be cleared, you know what I'm saying? Like you mentioned before, you know, I've got two daughters. And we had this conversation years ago uh, that, you know, if they did it, then they need to be, you know, prosecuted with the fullest extent of the law and serve time and things of that nature. Uh, but something in our system has to change uh, when we walk through the situation and you find that they're innocent, especially when you find that the person lied. You know what I'm talking about? And somehow they need to do something where they are now, since they've been persecuted and drugged through the mud and all this other stuff, and they've gone through all this stuff and lost all this money and, and everything else, to fully reinstate them to society. So that, you know, they won't be able to probably get back everything, but they need to be able to get back something. They need to be able to use their education to be out there and, and have a life, you know what I'm saying? Because basically they've gone through a process that you would hate anybody to go through. And then they've come out on the other end, but it's still like they're damaged goods. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's a shame. Now, you know, me myself, you know, I, I tell my daughters all the time, never put yourself in a vulnerable position. But I've trained my daughters differently. I told them this type of activity is only for marriage. Yes. This is why. Because when you do things outside of the covenant relationship of marriage, anything, anything can happen. You know, 
everybody gets in their feelings as as, as uh, 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 was that Drake? His new song, everybody in their feelings or whatever. <laughs> everybody gets in their feelings, yeah, and all like of a sudden things go sideways, right? And so th- this is why you know this is a bad, 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 bad. Because when you do this, then people are hurt, and just like Dre Bowles, you know, it it does put him in a bad light. You know, now it's almost like Bush Jones might have been right. I mean that that's why I said when when we were talking about it in the in the first hour I said that the real shame of this is that it never had to happen. It, if if these if these kids were just smarter with the situation out of the ordinary from from a lot of stuff that goes on in colleges in terms of right. but at the same time, you know, like exactly like you're saying if if you just put yourself in situations always where you know these things can't happen then they're not going to happen. But. Right. And then what? they have to also realize that they're targets. You know, yeah. here you are. here. you got a senior here. He's got to be wise enough to realize that, hey, I'm a senior. You know, I'm hot right now. I could be going to the – got a lot on the line. You know what I'm saying? And so you have to be much wiser in your choices and decisions about what you're doing and, and what you involve yourself with because it could jeopardize your career and the opportunities that you have before. So it's, it's a great learning lesson for them. Yeah. And hopefully it's yeah. a learning lesson for a lot of people. Yeah, the college the college scene, you know, you you know, you, you hear about going out, having a good time, drinking, and then, you know, going to someone's room and boom. You know, that that's – in my world, that's crazy. But what was going on in that room – that's a revolving around this trial. Mm-hmm. That's something that I I'm I'm not comfortable with. I've right. I've never even had the desire to to engage like in that way. Um, right. I'm sorry, I don't want to be in another room with no dude like that. So I mean, that was just a little <laughs> that was just a little uncomfortable. For, I mean, I'm just saying, like I don't uh-huh. I don't want to see you, man. Like I'm sorry. Um, that I mean, that's a little uncomfortable. So like a lot of people kind of heard some of the details of re- revolving the case. It was like, oh my gosh, like you know, morally, man, what do we, I mean? God, they were disappointed morally. Um, that's not normal in college. I'm sorry, that's not normal. That is that did not happen uh, well, on a daily sh- I, basis. I, I guess I mean shenanigans with women and sex, and you know that's uh, now, like you said, this this particular act is a little more on the extreme end, but um, you know, the, I I just mean. I, yeah, I just want I just want to dealing with I just want to clarify girls and guys. I just right, want to right. clarify for those yeah. that may have heard it a different way. So, um, hey, one other thing, and I'll, I'll take this off the air, man. Now back, back to football. Okay, you know it was great being able to uh, come in this morning and and listen to the Clemson station, and they were talking about their recruits, but they they seem to have left off how Tennessee beat them out for a recruit that actually their brothers on the team. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, and that was Tyrus, isn't it? When, yes, uh, Tyrus yeah, Fields. Yeah, Tyrus Fields. And, uh, I mean, he's a four-star. And then they had a guy actually tweet them because they were talking about how great their class is this year. And they've got 12 three-stars on their team. Now, I'm not saying anything about three-stars because we know, understand that, you know, a three-star evaluation process and it's about putting your eyes on the kids and stuff like that. Uh, but it started making them thinking about their position you know, how they're not rattling off these five stars like they were, even though they have a few. You know what I'm saying? They got some five stars. They got some four stars. But it wasn't like, you know, maybe one of those major recruiting classes they've had in the past or whatever. And they start kind of debating on their class and, and where they are and things of that nature. Uh, but you guys mentioned something the other day about having um, – a, a, a class or, or, or what's a successful formula. And I'll never forget when Nick Saban first started, he said, all you really need is great coaches because what happens is you're going to end up, if you have a great squad and you, and you put a great product on the field, if you have a few of the prima donnas, few of the five stars, you know, a handful of four stars and a boatload of, of, of three stars that you believe in. And he said, you can cultivate those guys and put a product on the field and be successful. And he did that. Now, of course, you know, he can do whatever he wants. He's probably got more five stars and four stars than he does three stars. But, you know, I'm just saying, I, I'm trusting the process. I'm trusting Pruitt and their eyes and their evaluation and what they're seeing, you know, on tape and when they're going to the high schools and when they're going to these camps. And I believe the product on the field we're going to be very pleased with. And, and you can see how well they're doing in recruiting. I'm, I'm excited about the 2019 class. 2020 class is going to be even better. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm even excited. I, uh, I had a friend, Caleb, I'm giving a shout-out to you today. Uh, Caleb got us some tickets for uh, the uh, 
Char- Charlotte game, me, my son, and him, we're going to be hooked up. We're going to go down there to Charlotte, and we're going to see game one of uh, Tennessee versus West Virginia. I'm hoping we bring them some good luck. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, hope so. And, and put our eyes on the prize, and, and we get a victory. We come out and be excited about it that following Monday, man. So. Well, Vaughn Nation, thank you so much for the phone call. I really, really appreciate it. And, and Tennessee is doing a good job in recruiting. You can overreact one way or the other. But Tennessee is doing a good job. If we were not, I would not say we was doing a good job. We are doing a good job. Are other teams doing a better job? Yeah, there's other teams that's doing a better job right now uh, as we look, you know, at at July. But Tennessee is doing a good job and has a really great opportunity to close very, very strong. I will just say that. Very good chance. Uh, Next on the hotline is um, Trevor. Trevor, good morning. Hey, good morning, gentlemen. Hey, Trevor, how you doing, man? Hey, doing well. How you guys? Great, man. How are you? I mean, uh, what's on hey, your mind? Good. Sorry about that. No, no, that's good. Um, yeah, I just want to talk about, uh, you know, like you're saying, a lot of these people, you know, stargazers, if you want to call them that, I don't have as much of a problem with it um, simply for the fact that you know, Jeremy Pruitt, he's been, he's been in winning programs before. He's been at Florida State, you know, Alabama. People are going to try to tell me that, you know, he doesn't know what a you know what a, a championship caliber player looks like. Exactly. I mean, to me, he knows what a championship player looks like. He's not going to offer a guy to come play for the University of Tennessee if he doesn't think that they can help him win the championship. Um, simply for the fact that if he's bringing these guys in and, and personally wanting to work them out and see them for himself, I put more stock in that than you know relying on these star ratings. Um, I feel like that's what Butch Jones did a lot more. Was he just kind of was wanting to chase guys for, for the star ratings, make himself look a little better. But um, if, if Pruitt was offering these guys without personally seeing them, working them out, it might bring me a little more uh, hesitancy. Yeah, but me too. Simply for the fact that he's 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 been around championship caliber players, you know, Mick Fitzpatrick, Jalen Ramsey. I mean, he knows he knows what, what good players look like. So. As competitive as Pruitt is, and we've heard about his competitive nature from stories uh, – you know, dating back to his time in Georgia, and I, I said this last week, hearing the details about his riff with Mark Rick made me like him even more, made me even more confident that he could be successful here at Tennessee. Hearing that, knowing that, you really think that he would recruit someone that's not going to help him beat Georgia, help him beat Florida, help him beat Alabama. These are the players that he thinks he can win with. And you can be disappointed that Georgia is doing what they're doing, getting good players. I get that. Because that's like the you know that's like being a neighbor and seeing your neighbor get a brand new lawnmower or brand new car or RV. I mean, hey, it's natural to look over and go, man, your grass looks good. Let me go, let me go fertilize my fertilize my grass. Let me go make sure my grass looks good. That's natural, but you still got to keep things in perspective. You have nice things too. We have really good players committed to Tennessee too, and there's other things that have to go into just recruiting good players. You have to develop them. You have to make sure they stay out of trouble. You have to make sure that the team plays together. They're not selfish and that you have uh, infighting. These are all things now that you have to do after you get really good players. So um, it's not over. I mean, the, the, you know, the, the, the results are not set in stone after you recruit really good players. There's still work to do. Oh, yeah, exactly. Now, I'll, I'll say this and I'll get off here, but uh... – you know, going back to the guy, uh, who was the guy last year that Tennessee picked up on and went to Florida State late in the recruiting process after they kind of discovered him? Man, you know what? Every time we try to bring that kid up, we always forget <laughs> him because it, it took it took us forever. It took us uh, everything to even, you know, know the kid uh, when he was yeah. coming to Tennessee, and then he just flipped, um, and then we kind of forgot about him, but we'll pull it up right now yeah. and uh, but, we'll, uh, we'll tell you. But the wide receiver from Georgia. Yeah, yeah, but what I, my point was, you know, this, it's still early in the recruiting process, and you got a lot of these guys that, that still haven't really been discovered, like the the guy from uh, we just picked up from the mid state. Uh, guy looks like a <laughs> looks like a, a player, a dog. <laughs> I mean, you talking yeah. about the you talking about the defensive uh, the defensive tackle? Yeah, yeah, the guy had the profile yeah. pick with like the big chain around his neck. Yeah, grown grown yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah grown yeah, man. So, I mean, you know, there's still plenty of time for these guys to get. You know, they're going to get Jordan reevaluated and, and bumped up. So I mean, it's I think it's a little early to to start acting like you know we're we're panicking and we're getting out recruited. So that's all. So you guys have a good one. Thank you, man. It's just it's just so early right now. And Ben, you said that Jordan Young was the receiver that Tennessee got in and laid on in Georgia. Elijah and, Simmons is the D tackle he was yeah. referring to. And then he uh, and then Jordan Young went to 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 Florida State late in the process. 
Uh, maybe he was a Florida State fan growing up, um, and and that was uh, what was enough to flip him to Florida State. Even though Tennessee is a is a school that gave him the love first from a big time program, so that stuff that stuff happens. Uh, I will tell you this: Brian Maurer is a perfect fit for Tennessee personality wise. He reminds me a lot of um, Casey Clawson. You got to have confidence. You got to have a certain swag. It's one thing to have confidence. It's another thing to have a certain type of swag that allows you to get along with some of your teammates. Have your teammates who are from different different cultures, different backgrounds, different part of the country to say, man, yeah, this kid is different. He looks different to me. He's raised differently to me. But, man, he got some swag. And the, the, this is how relationships formulate. This is how chemistry uh, is built. Brian Maurer is going to be able to get along with his teammates in a huge, huge way, man. The dude is super cool. Um, I got a chance to bump into him um, out and about, I think it was Friday, and met him. A lot of, lot of swag, a lot of confidence, but very humble as well. He's gaining weight, rocket arm. Uh, they are building this class together with their players. There's a group chat. Uh, he's trying to recruit players left and right to play, play with him. The recruiting is going very well, I'm telling you. And it's only going to get better from here to National Signing Day. So just, just relax, folks. It's all good. Swain event, stay with us. <coughs> Hour three of the Swain event is brought to you by the Low T Center and LowTCenter.com. Do you know your numbers? Feel like you again. Let us help. VFL's Jason Swain and Todd Kelly here with our Men on Football and Smoothie segment. Let's discuss some of our favorite smoothies and how they impact our lives. TK, man, tell me which smoothie comes to mind when you think about playing defense. Swain O, the Peanut Butter Power Plus and the Power Punch Plus provide the energy needed to make plays every time they take the field. Then you have the Gladiator and the Hulk. Nutrition every dominant player has to have. Bottom line, everyone wants to be a dominant player. Now, Swain, you tell me about the offensive side of the ball. TK, it's simple. You always score with Smoothie King. The shredder personifies what we are going to do to opposing defenses. The berry punch and activator will light up the scoreboard. And in case we need to go into overtime, the pure recharge will put us over the top for the win. Swain O, you know I love football and Smoothie King. I'm a VFL, a Smoothie King for life. The chocolate gladiator and the chocolate shredder with the scoop of peanut butter. Oh, that's my go-to smoothie. They get a chest bump all day. Yes, sir. This concludes our Men on Football and Smoothie King segment for today. Don't forget the Sip by Sip program. Use Smoothie King as a meal replacement five or more times a week, and you will feel and see the difference. Smoothie King, the healthy alternative to fast food. Delicious and nutritious. TK... Don't forget the peanut butter. Yeah, boy. Gentlemen, when it comes to health and quality of life, there are numbers every man needs to know, including our testosterone number. I recommend going to Low T Center. They make it quick and easy to get your levels checked, and it's covered by most health insurance. Low T levels can make you feel tired and grumpy. It can raise your cholesterol, cause weight gain, and loss of muscle mass. Low T Center's physicians specialize in treating low T in men. Listen to me here. They know men's health and are reinventing men's health care. Call 865-392-1388 or go to LowTCenter.com. It's Christmas in July at Better Mattress. Better Mattress has teamed up with Home Depot and with select purchases, you can get a free Weber grill or choose a free adjustable base or a free headboard footboard while supplies last. Better Mattress has brands you know like Tempur-Pedic and Sealy, plus the brand I love, the Better Mattress brand, handcrafted in East Tennessee. Go to Better Mattress and get a free adjustable base free headboard footboard, or free Weber grill while supplies last. Six area locations, BEDRmattress.com. Do you have cracks in your foundation? 
a wet basement, or a nasty, leaky crawl space? Our listeners have heard about them on the Swain event for over a year, and now it's time to make the call. Give Be Dry Waterproofing and Foundation Repair the opportunity to fix your home's problem. Since 1958, that's right, nearly 60 years, Be Dry has been solving basement, crawl space, and foundation problems throughout the country. Be Dry only uses high quality materials from reputable manufacturers. They back their installations with some of the best warranties in the industry to provide homeowners with added peace of mind. They are truly an A plus company. Whenever you start experiencing a wet basement, leaky crawl space, or a cracked foundation, remember these three words better call Be Dry. Reach out to Be Dry today at 865 662 5238 to schedule your free appointment. That's 865 662 5238. Remember, better call B Dry. All right, team, listen up. It's tailgating time again in Tennessee. But most importantly, team, you're going to need to refine that tailgate and the truck it's attached to. With a refinanced auto loan with Alcoa 10 Federal Credit Union with their got that promotion, they'll give you up to $500 for your debt. I see, coach. That's right, Johnny. Alcoa 10 will pay you up to $500 for your debt. Now, let's get out there and spread the word. Say it with me. Alcoa 10. Alcoa 10. Alcoa 10. ATFCU is an equal housing lender. At some point in your life, you're going to need an attorney. You need a guy like Jerrica Steele with the law firm of Butler, Vines, and Bab. Jerrica Steele is East Tennessee born, and he understands what giving his all truly means. To Jared, every case is big, and every client is important. He will aggressively push your case to make sure you are quickly paid every dollar that you deserve. Give Jerrica Steele a call, 865-244-3933, and talk with him directly. His office is located at 27. 27- 01 Kingston Pike. So if you've been injured in a car wreck, let Jerrica Steele and Butler Vines and Bab fight for you. For a replay of each day's Swain Event TV, like us on Facebook. So we learned during the break that, uh, well, not really during the break, we knew because of Ben's Twitter account, that he went to the Braves game. I guess he wanted to see a real organization play a little baseball, so he decided to go to the Braves what? game. I, I can't tell what that dig was at because there's no way that was a dig at the Yankees. I know, I'm just kidding, because the Yankees are the, the gold standard in baseball. But um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would understand that coming from like a, a, a Cardinals fan or, or like a – Red Sox fan or, or you know, Giants fan. You know, Giants won super, super – I mean, the World Series a couple times there. But from a Rangers fan? Mm-mm. Well, here's the deal. You're not even the most popular. The Rangers sh- have played in a World Series more <laughs> recently than the Yankees have. So, <laughs> the go Yankees, ahead and – The Yankees have won a World <laughs> Championship <laughs> That's true. since the last time the Rangers have. And yeah. the Rangers aren't even the most recognizable Rangers in the United States. Ooh, the New York Rangers? The New York Rangers are 100% more recognizable Ugh, than the Texas Rangers. Come on. The hockey team? In New York City? New York City? I mean, Texas, the... I mean, I don't think it's like leaps and bounds. The Rangers... <laughs> the Fort Worth, Dallas area has a population that's close to the population of Manhattan. Uh, if I, th- I think the Ra- I Personally, <laughs> I think... Like there. I think the hockey Rangers are more recognizable than the baseball Rangers. It, and that's not the knock on. They've been around for longer. That's true. But uh, I just because of the popularity of hockey. Ra- and I love hockey. Aren't the Rangers one of the original six? Weren't they? I or were those, they are, yeah. Or the, I don't know that they were called teams? the Rangers originally. but They yeah, had a New York team. Them, Toronto, the Canadians. All the Canadians. Anyways, yeah. there's your hockey talk for the summer. I know, right? <laughs> uh, going to the text box, Leo from, from Hardin Valley says, I was in Atlanta last week. Uh, for work, and the guys on 680 The Fan were talking about Pruitt and Rick. The Vols find themselves comfortably in the minds of Georgia fans. P.S. Georgia sucks. Well, that's what I was going to Pollock is a whiner, <laughs> and Murray sucks is what Leo from Hart Valley says. That's what I was going to ask Excellent Vol Nation message. because it seems like every time Vol Nation come, calls in, he's talking about Clemson stations, talking about Tennessee. So I want to know. Why are Clemson stations always talking about Tennessee? I don't know. I wouldn't if I was up there. Uh, what is, they don't have anything that literally don't yeah. have any correlation yeah. except for Amari Rodgers and T, T. Higgins. Yeah. But. A lot of recruiting battles between Tennessee and Clemson, but that's – otherwise, I 
Yeah, we, I have no idea why you'd be talking about UT. Yeah, we lost some other battles to to Clemson too, but uh, the, the the guys from right here in our backyard that that hurts. But if I'm Clemson, why why am I talking about Tennessee? I mean, I'm in a whole other stratosphere from Tennessee right now. Uh, South Calculate Vol says just a system equals how good of a lawyer you can afford. That's a and see that this is where I was it Pete where he called in he, and it's a whole can of worms to talk about the anthem stuff. Just when when I look at that. The justice system is far, far more than – I mean, I'm sure there are racist people in the justice system, but the biggest problem when it comes to the courts strictly is uh, if you're rich and you can get a good lawyer, you got a much, much better chance of getting off than somebody that's poor. That's, uh, and that's – I mean, that that to me is – is just such a giant. That's that's problem. correct, but let's not sit here and say that is the only, you know, thing that's inconsistent with the justice system. There's plenty and of problems that but. we are 100 percent not going to involve race. I mean, let's let's not sit here and be naive to think it's that it does not factor into uh, the criminal justice system a little bit. Um, it could be. 10%, 25%, 50%, 75%, 50 but let's not sit here and act like it is zero. No. Class is a part of it. Uh, there are examples. I'm not going to go through it today um, because I try to keep this thing in sports as much as possible. Um, but there are examples of how class is just not part of it. Okay? Um, if you want to reach out to me on, offline, I yeah. can show you examples. That's okay? a conversation yeah. to but have we're not going to do it. We're not, not gonna, on the show. Yeah, we're not going to do it. To, <laughs> we're not going to do it on this show because I like yeah. to keep this thing sports as much as possible and away from politics. Okay, um, but I do pay attention to everything that goes on, and I do bookmark and save a lot of stories that go on for, you know, in case I got to use some examples off off the air. So, anyways, um, South Cacolac, you know, pretty much. Said same thing about money and all that stuff. Uh, Josh in Tennessee says, guys, it should be that they say yes, not that they did not say no. Anyone could be too scared to say no, but that does not mean that they wanted to do it. You have to stop saying that people make stuff up. Less than 2% of all cases come from a standpoint that the person is making stuff up. Uh, and then Prince says, FBI sexual assault statistic. They... The thing, the thing that was so shaky about the the, the 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 testimony and the charges brought against AJ and Mike Williams is you, you just had you had so many um, cracks in the case even before it went to, went to trial with the phone being discarded. Um, you know, we're gonna sit here and call AJ Johnson an animal when you had previous relationships with this. Animal? Yeah, that's I mean, that's I'm something just, that Josh is not taking into account is I mean, that a, according to some of the testimony here is that she had had relations with AJ in the past. I uh, and and so she had said yes in in the past. I mean, he's yeah. saying she needs to say yes instead of just saying yeah. no, which we, is fair. And we're talking about that particular but, moment in that room because you can say yes. You know, nine out of ten times. But if you say no that one time, no means no. It does not give you Absolutely. green light. So we understand that. Um, but her testimony is her words, and I'm paraphrasing here, is that she said she had an opportunity to tell them no, and she did not. And she could see how they didn't know that she did not want to want to do that. And so, you know, with with. That testimony, it just seems like they just, they just had a really weak case against A.J. Johnson and Mike Williams. Also understand, I'm not here because I'm not comfortable throwing vitriol at this young girl. That's not what I'm doing, and I don't feel comfortable doing that. I don't put a lot of the, the blame on her. Yes, I'm disappointed that you know, she, she allowed to get to this point, but, again, she – Went to the police. She said she was raped, and now the grown-ups took that and was like, "Okay, let's build this case against these two guys." There was the case wasn't strong enough, so I'm disappointed in the system that it, it took away four years of these young men's lives. I don't have a lot of hate and bad words for the young lady. I, I just, I just don't. I don't feel it in my heart to have it. Um, so we're trying to be as careful as we can, responsible as we can, and going by things that were said during the court. 
um, and, and things that, um, that, that you know, I know kind of surrounding the case and things like that. But I want to be very, very responsible here because it's easy for everyone to get really emotional about which, what happened and just say some things that they don't mean, say some things that's unfair, say some things that's just not true. So, and to uh, just tell you, you know, where, we, where we've been saying, she said she didn't say no. This is the exact quote. Prosecutor asked, did you ever tell him no? Uh, the accuser responded while testifying in court. I did not want it to happen, but – I just didn't say anything, so he would have no way of knowing. So that's yeah, how that's, she, yeah, she put it. Uh, do it that, yeah. But you will, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's let's get to the phones. And uh, Patrick says the accuser testified. She had she said no to to Williams, but not but not AJ. So they were in the room. AJ and her to have prior relationships. She was not. She says she said no to AJ and Mike Williams having intercourse with her. And so that is what they were trying to prove. All right, let's get to uh, my I, – I just became best friends with this caller, and his name is Caleb, and we are best friends. All right, Caleb, you must be a Steelers fan or a Yankees fan. Uh, that would be a Yankees fan, yeah. Ah, surprising there. Good morning, Caleb. Hey, this is VP Ump from Athens. Um, oh, what's hey. up, man? Hey, man, uh, first-time caller, so just wanted to uh, uh, get on, on to ask you a couple of questions about recruiting, man. Um, so, um, with the commits we've already gotten um, so far this year, do you think that uh, the early signing period, do you think crew is pushing for a lot of uh, kind of groups that have committed so far to sign then, or do you think, this goes all the way to February with some of these big time guys. I, I think. Well, I think if you're a coach, you should absolutely, you should absolutely push for the players to sign early. You know, like a Wangye Morris. Is there any reason for him to push this thing out if he's not anything uh, lower than 100 percent committed, 100 percent sure? So you want to push for him to go ahead and be committed, but you don't want to ruin your chances with a really good player by pressuring him to sign early when he's not ready and then another school is willing to wait and then he decides to go to the other school. So you have to just treat every situation, um, you know, delicately and be very, very, um, you know, aware of your recruits' wishes and how they want to handle their recruitment. Um, if Wanye Morris is tired of the process and tired of folks trying to flip him, then, yeah, you encourage him to go ahead and sign early. But if you have a guy like a uh, Corvair's Crouch or Darnell Wright and they still need some time, you would be crazy to tell him either now or never. This thing is moving on without you. Really? No, you're not going to do that with him. But you can do it with a lower-rated guy that you see some talent in him. You see he has elite measurables. But you see that you can get that type of player somewhere else too. And so you can you can be a little bit more aggressive with that, with that recruit to encourage him to sign early or they're going to look somewhere else or his spot won't be open. So uh, I just think it depends on the recruit. Yeah, there's a lot of times the um, early signing period, do they have a lot of early enrollees as well? Or does it matter if you sign in February? Well, you can be an early enrollee. It depends on your high school classwork. If you've done everything in your four years of high school, to qualify to graduate early, enter college in, in January, then you can do that if you're early signee, um, you know, or 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 not. I mean, Jalen Hurd was able to 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 uh, come in January, and they didn't have an early signing period at that time. So I just really think it depends on the the high school workload. If you tell yourself, "I want to be early enrollee as a sophomore in high school." and you're going to summer school and you're taking extra classes, you're doing everything you can in your power to put yourself in a position to um, enroll in college in January, then that's something that's done. At the, I think that's done at the high school level. I don't think it has okay. much to do with the early signing period. Gotcha. Well, I appreciate that information. It's good to hear well, from hey, you. Hey, man, I'm, yeah, I'm, looking, I'm driving to uh, Pruitt's um, first stop and first win uh, coming through Charlotte right now. So uh, – I like just, it. Just uh, head, head back down to uh, Georgia. So just wanted to give a call in while the show is still on. Don't usually get a chance in the morning to call in. So um, 
big shout out to Ball Nation too. Um, we were trying to get in contact last night, but um, didn't work out. But um, appreciate the show, guys. Hey, thank you, Caleb. Appreciate that. So Ball Nation was giving props to Caleb for hooking him up with tickets, getting them to Charlotte. That was that was the Caleb that Ball Nation was referring to. Uh, and my new best friend. Yeah, new best friend because you guys are are, are Yankee fans together. A six five two hundred fifty five zero three B dry waterproofing hotline. Uh, Ken says no comparison between Burrell and Mosley. Emmanuel weighed one hundred forty five pounds and had forty five to forty pounds a game. Burrell needs about ten to fifteen. He'll easily do that in year one. I agree with uh, I agree with Ken there. Uh, T Luck says those who have watched the new Last Chance you, how would you react to Coach Brown's coaching style? <coughs> Excuse me. How I would react would be, I want to say, what was it number two, the receiver there, Carlos Thompson. Carlos Thompson, who had who had been with uh, Coach Brown in three at, different stops at Texas Tech, got kicked out, went to a JUCO in California that didn't work, uh, and then he went to Dodge City mm-hmm. with Coach Brown from California mm-hmm. that didn't work, and then was on his. Literally his last chance at independence, and then he, then he had to go play uh, D two or D three somewhere because he had ran out of eligibility at the D one level. Mm. So you so you spoiling the you spoiling the show for me now because I didn't know he had to go to D two. Thanks thanks a lot, man. Oh, my bad. I thought you finished it. No, I didn't. You man. said you watched like seven episodes. No, one I, day. I didn't finish it, man. I didn't. Still finish Still spoiler it. alert no. for everyone that's man, listening. Thanks a lot, man. I haven't, I haven't watched any of it. So. I'm sorry. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot. Yankee. Now I don't have to watch it. Way to yeah. go. Yeah. Um, I learned this in high school because I had a basketball coach that um, was an a-hole, and, but he was a great basketball coach. Like, he was, he was great. He's one of the best high school coaches in Alabama State history, but he's an a-hole. And uh, he got himself in some trouble. Things that he did, and he's not necessarily my favorite person. I'm probably I'm probably not his favorite person uh, because he thought he can control that whole entire school and get people to only play basketball and not play other sports. And when I came through, we put a little end to that, and and uh, it was a controversial controversial um, time there. But my basketball coach, I give you this example, answering the question from uh, T Lux here, is that. He would say things to you that would probably affect your confidence, make you think you're not good enough. He would always be on you. And we had to come to a realization that you just need to listen to what he's saying instead of how he's saying it. Because if you get caught up in how someone is saying something to you, then you can sometimes miss the the message. In between the MFers, what is he saying that's going to help you become a better football player? That is just how he communicates. Now, sometimes you have kids who they shut down, but those kids are last chance you. They are there for a reason. They are there because they have not listened to someone using normal language with them. They have not listened. They have not followed direction, either academically. They have not, you know, done the right things. They got themselves kicked off because they got themselves into legal trouble or they broke some team rules. So, obviously, talking to them in a normal way does not work. So, now you have to MF them every other word to get them to wake up and understand. So if it takes Jason Brown to use MFing, you know, 76 times in a sentence to get these kids graduated, to get these kids to, you know, D1 or back to college, I think it's 100% worth it. I have no problem with it. If I was in that position, it wouldn't really bother me that much. Um, That's not going to – that doesn't mean I wouldn't say something back because I probably would at some point. Like, you mf me 100 times, I'm probably going to MF you at least once or twice back, you know. But that's just the relationship that you sometimes have with a coach. Um, you can kind of go back a little bit and, f- and go back and forth a little bit with a coach if you are playing with effort, if you are playing hard, um, you care about your teammates. You can argue with your coach. I've, I've done it before. I've argued with Troop before. Uh, it wasn't any MFers thrown back and forth. But, we, you know, we, we argue. But at the end of the day – it was because we respected each other. We believed in what we were saying. And it was no question on how hard I was going and how no no question about how hard he was going. It was just two men who just had different opinion. opinion. Uh, we voiced our opinion. We moved on. 
he's the authority. So he wins. I respect that. We move on. I, I do think that Coach Brown's style of coaching would not work anywhere else other than a JUCO. I, I, I agree. I don't think it would work at D1, D2, D3. Nope. That only works at a JUCO. And I truly believe it's a a product of where he is from, not necessarily a something he is choosing to do. He's not doing it to undermine the kids or degrade the kids. He's doing it just because that's where he's from. That's what he grew up on. That's all he knows. That's what they call each other. Um, MFers. And, I mean, it's just – And like I, I said this last week, I believe, the difference between Buddy Stevens – uh, who was at East Mississippi, and Coach Brown is that I truly believe Coach Brown is genuine versus where Buddy, he's more concerned about winning a national championship rather than getting the players graduated, moving on to the next level, so on and so forth. And there are plenty of examples that we could go through all day long. So I don't – because Coach Brown is genuine, I don't necessarily like the MF, every other sentence, every other word, but because he is genuine with his players and truly cares – about the best thing for them, I, I kind of give him a soft pass for it. I, I've I've become <laughs> entertained at how many different ways he uses it. <laughs> like, wow, man, you, you use it in that context? I never heard it used that way before. That's pretty impressive. Like, I've I've watched Coach Brown to see, man, how how many different ways can he use mf -er? Adjective. It's pretty impressive. Verb. It is noun. How do you make yeah. a noun? Yep. Proper now. Yep, it's it, man. It's it's truly impressive the way he can use MF for so many different times. But those players respond to it. And those players are at JUCO for a reason. So Yeah, that's I all that really ben. matters at the yeah. end of the day. I agree with Ben. There's that's the only place you can use that. Because even the president was like, eh, I mean you The know, president was uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean And the athletic director. Yeah, he's like, ah, you know, whoo. You know, I mean, we got people coming to the practice and you know, they hear that and but you haven't won a conference championship since 1987. So which one I don't do think you yeah. want? I, th I didn't think they'd ever won one. Uh, the conference championship was 1987, the last time they won one. I was watching this morning. Um, what episode are you on? They beat. They just beat Coffeeville. So that's the second to last episode, I think. Yeah. So um, do you want to win or do you – want your coach to be a, a, a pastor or not not cuss at all. I mean, sorry, this is how you, this is how the players respond. They respond to a coach that talks like them. And unfortunately, these young men, they that's what, this is the way they talk. He signed 32 kids because of who he is. They went from and zero not, to, 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 but, to and, winning a, a, a you know, division title there. And then it's not just kids. I mean, Rakeem Boyd who was a five-star running back at one point. Kingston Harris, who was a five-star running back at one point. Uh, the kid that goes to watch, or goes to play wide receiver somewhere. Um, that was already known because I think it says he's a Washington State commit under his thing throughout the entire show. So, mm, okay. The, Calvin Jackson, what's his so name? So many spoilers. Calvin Jackson. Just it's not it. a spoiler? Just spoil it, man. Just, just ruin just, it you should have already seen that. So, if you miss it, that's okay. Oh, my fault. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's how it is. You're going to victim blame me, huh? Yep. It's yep. been out. My it's fault. been out for a, a week and a half. How have you not sat down and spent eight hours of your life? <laughs> yeah. Because I had fault. I had strep last weekend. That's why I have an excuse, Charlie. My fault. My fault. Fair, fair, fair. It's our fault, Charlie. We didn't watch we didn't yeah, yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. 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 Got it. All right, that's our time for today. I just try to scout in the good and I'm trying to cover Tennessee to the best of my ability. Why haven't you watched it, Charlie? Uh, good flip. Good flip. I don't flip, have babe. time. Good flip. Oh, please, babe. you got time to go on vacation though. Gotcha. 865 is the number to the Beat Drive Waterproof Hotline. For Ben McKee, Charlie Burris, and Jason Swain, have a great day. Peace and love. We're out. Our three of the Swain events.